Hello and welcome back to my channel, Quirky What If. Join us as we delve into the realms of fanfiction and fantasy, bringing you the best stories and discussions. Today, we're kicking off the first part of our series, What If Deku Cross Dressed. If you enjoy this video, please give it a like and subscribe for more content in the future. The author of this story is Kuji17 from fanfiction.net. All the relevant links are in the description. Feel free to say hello to the author on their profile. Now, let's dive into the fanfic. UA Hallways, Third Person POV. Today Izuku Midoriya was running late to homeroom as his bus had arrived late today, on top of him sleeping in by accident. On the other end of the hallway was a girl from General Ed with a unique quirk not really suited for combat. She too was running late like the previous mentioned student, as a result they collided. In the blink of an eye the clothes of the two students were swapped for all except their shoes. However neither had noticed and quickly apologized before running to their respective classes, with the girl having the more lenient teacher in the form of present Mike. Izuku Midoriya on the other hand had the second toughest teacher in UA history as his homeroom teacher. He stalled for another few seconds as he had to give his apologies to a group of students he passed by carrying supplies. While running a thought crossed his mind as for why he could feel the wind so clearly on his legs. However he had dismissed this as his mind was immediately refilled with thoughts of an angry Aizawa sensei waiting for him. The girl was with similar thoughts as to why she suddenly felt almost no wind on her legs despite running her fastest to make it on time. Unlike the young man she had bumped into earlier she had pushed those thoughts aside for a different reason. It was not her teacher she feared but the ridicule of her classmates for failing to show up on time. When she got to her class everyone was silent and just looking at her strangely as though she had something on her face. Her teacher began laughing for some reason unknown yet to the girl for nearly three minutes before finally stopping to wheeze for air. That is the correct dress code. If you were a male student that is. Present Mike told the girl as she looked down realizing what she was wearing. I accidentally activated my quirk again. She thought to herself before squatting down and covering her now probably red face. When Izuku Midoriya got to class he was wheezing as his lungs were burning from overuse. As he finally got some air he looked up to see the guy's faces twitching with awkward smiles. The girls and a few of the guys were blushing with the girls covering their mouths, excitement rather than shock on their faces. He was confused until he heard his teacher groan drawing his attention to the hobo-looking hero. Midoriya, why the hell are you both late in cross-dressing? He asked his student making the young man confused. Izuku Midoriya looked down to see he was wearing not the clothes he put on this morning but the female uniform. Why am I wearing the female uniform? Izuku Midoriya shouted in confusion as he tried to hide behind his school bag in overwhelming embarrassment. He was sure his face was as red as Kirishima hair right now unsure of how he will explain it to All Might. S-H-O-U-T-A-I-Z-A-W-A-P-O-V I had started roll call only to see that problem child was not here. This worried me to say the least. Out of everyone here the only ones more punctual were Ida and Yeirazu. They had just barely survived the USJ incident and I was supposed to be telling them of the upcoming sports festival. It is to be taking place the first month after the being of the semester, so a little over two weeks from now. This made me worried for his safety as I was not told that my student would be missing school today. All the other students were also clearly worried as they were told last week that Midoriya was supposed to be fine. I was about to call Nezu to check with him to see if he simply decided to worry me out of amusement by not telling me of his absence. Then the door swung open and I saw Problem Child coming out of breath with even if I would never admit it relieved me. It was a second later I noticed what he was wearing and was dreading what he would have to tell me. I was not the best with students in terms of emotional support, and if he was transitioning like Tiger from the wild wild PP cats did when they were younger, I was screwed. Then again I could not help but hope I was completely wrong and this was the result of something else. I decided to bite the proverbial bullet and just ask him hoping I do not cause him any more mental anguish than already experienced. Midoriya, why the hell are you both late in cross-dressing? I asked him seeing he was clearly confused by my question. It was an odd reaction but better than him being hurt or scared by my usual temperament I put on for most people. Problem child looked down as though to just now see he was wearing female uniform. Why am I wearing the female uniform my student shouted in confusion as he tried to hide behind his school bag in what was obvious even to me, to be overwhelming embarrassment. At least this meant that he did not do this on purpose, though it did make things a bit more complicated now that it had. Midori you look so cute. Ashido exclaimed standing up leaning over her desk. Ddd Kyu kun was a girl this whole time. Yuraka shouted as she cupped her face with both her hand floating to the ceiling with what I swear was steam coming out of her head. Why did you not tell me you like to wear girls' clothes? I would have loved to invite you over to try on some of my clothes. Hagakure asked him and exclaimed what her response would have been if she had known. WHWHWH were you? Some kind of cute pervert. Gyro asked him while letting it slip that she was attracted to him to some degree. This is quite improper. But I do agree those stockings do a really good job of showing how well-toned his leg muscles are. Yayurazu said making that two confessions now that I need to make keep focused on their training. I know this might be a little wrong to ask, but am I the only one getting tingly between their thighs? Tiro, Asui said awkwardly rubbing her thighs together as bluntly as always. This made three I had to worry about with her being a legitimate worry for problem child virginity. 
Up till now I had to worry only about mind going after the girls, now I needed to worry about the girls going after problem child. Deciding to defuse the situation as quickly as possible before I could be interrupted again I walked over to kneel down to his eye level. Calm down, you are not in any trouble I just need you need to give me an explanation of this morning so far. I asked him as he stopped shaking and took a deep breath. After about 20 minutes of him explaining how he bumped into a girl Mike had told me about from his class I sighed. At least now I know what had happened, though the aftermath would be difficult, at worst Midoriya might need to visit Hound Dog again. And right after he was just given the okay from Hound Dog to join class again after the USJ incident. Deciding that the only thing that can be done would to get the female student to come and use her quirk again on my student. I dialed Mike on my phone to get an earful of his eardrum shattering laugh to top off the morning of worry such far. I take it your student has made it to class in my student's uniform. I said as he laughed again causing me to wince. After a brief conversation that followed it was unfortunately decided that due to her quirk's unfortunate time limit between uses. The two students had to go to recovery girl at the nurse's office and get changed there which was embarrassing for both. Present MICPOV. I did roll call for my 30 students as per usual when one student was not here when I called her name. It was not unusual as she was known to be a rather unlucky girl with a hard to control quirk. After about 10 minutes she arrived out of breath in the male uniform, looks like some poor guy got the worst end of this. While all her classmates sat in their seats silent and just looking at her strangely I however could not stop myself from laughing. After nearly laughing into unconsciousness I checked the clock to see that 3 minutes had passed before I finally needed to breathe again wheezing hard. That is the correct dress code, if you were a male student that is. I told the girl as she looked down only now seeming to realize what she was wearing. Needless to say I felt bad when she began to squat down and covering her now probably tomato red face. After some minutes had passed with me just barely managing to get my act together. I had successfully apologized for laughing so hard, but I still felt I needed to do something for the student as she was probably feeling humiliated right now. Then my phone started ringing and I saw it was Shouta calling me, that must mean it was his student she caught in this mess. When his call came through I could not help but laugh my ass off at the fact that he had to deal with this extra work. I take it your student has made it to class in my student's uniform. Shouta said not asked me in an exhausted sounding tones. This caused me to begin laughing again as I was confirmed to be right about the victim. Yes she did Shouta, I assume you want her to come to your class and activate her quirk again. I asked already no he would say yes. So to save him the trouble of wasting any more of his time as he dislikes that I continued. Unfortunately her quirk has a time limit in between uses. He said as his friend sighed loudly on the other end. Then we need to send them to recovery girl in the nurse's office to get changed there. He said as I had no objections and sent her down. Also let recovery girl know about this. Shouta told me as I expected him to get back at me somehow. With a heavy heart I dialed recovery girl number and braced myself for the earful to come from her. Recovery girl POV. I was shuffling through some paperwork making sure to file it and noticed Midoriya paperwork was next to file away. Despite this being the nurse's office both me and the principal received copies of any paperwork from hound dog therapy sessions. I decided to give as a read for Toshinori as he was not the greatest of teachers and I was worried he would be bad at addressing such things as mental health. It was clear that Izuku was distraught after the fight at the USJ seeing how useless his quirk was when he faced an actual villain. Hopefully he did not suffer anymore, the upcoming sports festival would be stressful enough on him. Then I got a call just as I was about to put his record away to see I had received a call from present Mike, I had a bad feeling about it. What are you calling for exactly? I asked him getting a nervous chuckle from him on his end. My student is coming down again due to her quirk swapping clothes again. Mike said as I held back a sigh of frustration at this being the fifth time this had happened so far. Who was the girl she swapped clothes with this time? I asked him getting an unusual and uncomfortable silence from him. After a few minutes I decided that it must have been worse than I thought it was this time around. I repeat myself. Who was the girl? I asked empathizing each one of the last four words shouting the last to get an answer out of him. It was a boy, specifically Izuku Midoriya. He said to me pausing before saying the name as I heard a short growl. I looked around for Hound Dog to realize that it was coming from me. Though I do try not to play favorites I can't help but feel like Izuku is a sort of grandson. Toshinori feels like a son of sorts to me in Gran Torino due to how Nana asked us to take care of him back then if she ever passed away. So as a result, his successor felt like family as well. So to hear he just underwent even more mental stress made me a tad upset to say the least. I will have you and Aizawa give me reports at a later date as to how you two handled the situation when the students arrived, understood. I said not asked despite the end of my sentence sounding more like a question. I heard an audible gulp and a yes ma'am from him before I hung up. When the students arrived both were embarrassed and I had them go to two different beds. Pulling up a sheet to separate the two I began giving them instructions. I will have you two strip and hand me your clothes and I will hand them back to the right owners. I said as they nodded quickly hurrying to get behind their respective sides. However a minute and I got a question from Izuku that made things more awkward than they already were. How do I take off a bra? He asked me in clear concern of his lack of knowledge on this subject. I will come in and help you get it off. 
I said sighing as to how embarrassed he must have felt. His face was red as he was down to panties and a bra, so I quickly helped him with the bra. After that it went relatively quickly as both were now dressed properly and bowing giving me their thanks for the help. I hope you will try to stay out of trouble boy. I said giving him a stern warning, despite this circumstance not being much his fault. I promise I won't grandma. He said causing a silence between everyone as a look of shock came over the female student face. He quickly covered his mouth with his hands shocked himself at what he just said to me now. You are not to speak of this to anyone. Understood. I told the female student making a similar threat I did to Mike earlier. She went pale as I patted my cane against the palm of my hand making my message clear. They shook their head vigorously and ran out back to assumingly their class as I turned to Izuku intercepting his apology he was about to give me. I understood you did it by mistake, and I will admit I have similar view of you my boy. I said patting his currently shaking shoulders. Thank you. I never knew my grandparents as mom said they had passed away when I was little. He said blushing lightly with a small smile. I sent him on his way after that and letting him know this was not something to be embarrassed about. But it was something he might not want to tell others, considering the attention he might get from their most likely wrong and blown up interpretation. After all, if he struggles to speak in front of his class, then he will definitely be overwhelmed by the thousands questions he would get sent his way. After he left I got to thinking of my own granddaughter who hates me, even now. When my daughter died I threw myself into my work despite the pain she was clearly in. Now I regret my decision to put my career before my family, however I do not have her contact information now. Last I heard she married a man who works overseas in America what was his name again. I asked myself out loud unable to remember his last name. The only thing I remember is that his first name was Hisashi and that his quirk was something to do with fire, a powerful one at that. KENDO household. ITSUKIKENDO POV. I was asked at the start of class to take six other students with me to get some supplies for the class that our teacher forgot to grab yesterday. So I got all the girls to go with me to enjoy some girl talk with us all the way from the boys' prying ears. As we were walking by we saw a boy we saw in all our UA acceptance videos as the second place scorer. He had messy green hair, emerald green eyes, diamond-shaped freckles, and, for some reason was wearing a girl's uniform. Hey is that the boy who got second place in the exam? Asked Pony to which we all nodded. Also is it just me or did you all also get turned on by him dressed as a girl? Setsuna posed the question as all with a blushing grin. Just because we all thought that it does not mean you had to say it out loud I thought to myself intending of speaking my mind like her. He looks so captivating, even without trying he is in center stage. Kinoko said in a near whisper but since we were all grouped together we all heard it. His beauty is so pure, even cross-dressing he emits such an innocent glow. Ibarra said looking as though she was ready to pray any second. The other two Yui and Ryako stayed silent as we continued to get the supplies, after which the rest of the day went as it normally did. Warning, this chapter will be like 90% the girls masturbating to Izuku if not more. Also this may continue into the next chapter as well. Then night came, I was in the shower rinsing away the sweat from today's training excited for the sports festival. My thoughts however began to drift towards Izuku Midoriya and I laid back against the wall of the shower in my room. My right hand found its way to my crotch and began rubbing the outside of my PP while my left hand fondled one of my melons. Moans began to escape my lips as I continued to think about how cute was in that uniform today. Eventually my two index fingers entered my PP and used my quirk to specifically enlarge them only. I imagined it was his PP making its way to my womb until I found one particularly pleasurable spot. I sped up the pace slowly as I began moving them in and out, hitting that spot again and again. Then minutes later I came letting out a long moan as I slide down the shower wall to the floor. Panting I caught my breath before getting on my knees and proceeded to do the same to my asshole. I continued to come again alternating between the two until a whole hour had passed. I got out on trembling legs and sore fingers drying myself off and falling face first on my bed naked. Deciding that getting dressed would be a waste of time, I curled up under my covers not getting dressed in anything before drifting off to sleep. If I win at the sports festival then maybe you will notice me. I thought to myself as the darkness took hold, only to soon be replaced with a dream of me winning first place and getting a congratulation kiss from him in an orange cheerleader outfit. Finished. T-S-U-N-O-T-O-R-I household. Pony T-S-U-N-O-T-O-R-I-P-O-V. When I first moved to this country to go to apply to my dream school UA I had difficulty with the language. Though my father was born here in Japan he moved to America to live with my mother where I was born. I came here where my cousins were to stay with them for the next three years while I study here. What felt like a bit of a downer was my father warned me how strict and formal they can be as I need to restrain myself here. But to my surprise just two weeks after classes started me and the girls went to get supplies for class. During this trip we saw the cute boy who got second place running by in the girls uniform. Hey is that the boy who got second place in the exam? I asked to which they all nodded in response to my question. Also is it just me or did you all also get turned on by him dressed as a girl? Setsuna posed the question us all with a blushing grin that was out of character for the cool collected girl she usually is. I definitely need a new pair of underwear after seeing him wear that I thought to myself as I hoped no one noticed. 
This was definitely going to be a much more interesting three years if cross-dressing cuties was a common sight. Warning, as soon as my aunt and uncle went to sleep I went to my cousin's room to borrow her vibrating dildo. She told me to properly clean before returning it to her tomorrow night, as well as to hide it so her mother would not find it by accident during the day when we were both at our respective schools. After stripping down I got under my covers and began playing with my clit using it starting at the mid-setting to warm up. I stifled my moans as I without thinking bit down on my pillow to avoid biting my own tongue from the rough sensation. Once I knew I was wet enough I opened myself up and shoved it into as far as it could go, just barely kissing the entrance of my womb. It amazed me as to how my cousin originally thought she could fit something this big in her own pee pee, but then again she is letting me borrow so can't really look down on her for wanting to bite off more than she could chew. I turned it on to maximum, this resulted in my back arching upward, and my toes curling inward from the pleasure. Muffled screams filled my room as I covered my mouth to make sure I did not wake up the others in the house. A steady stream of fluid came out of my pee pee soaking the rug at the foot of my bed for nearly a minute before it began to die down. There were some droplets on my bed from when it died down but those would most likely go unnoticed. I was about to grab a towel to wipe myself down when I noticed milk coming out of my melons. Sometimes I really hate inheriting cow traits from my mutant type ancestor. I lament as I grabbed the bucket I brought up earlier along with the empty milk jug. As I was about to do the tedious task of milking myself as I always did since puberty hit me I got an idea to make it more lively. I closed my eyes and began imagining Izuku Midoriya in a frilly salmon colored sundress with white shoulder trimming as well as a straw hat with a red bow wrapped around it on top of his head casting a small shadow over his emerald green eyes as they shone through. I imagined him forcing me on my hands and knees milking me, twisting my nipples, and taking a few nibbles of my tips a few times. Then I saw him pour some of the milk in a glass and take a sip, only to pull me in a kiss causing me to drink a combination of my own milk and his saliva. Then when I felt no more coming out of my melons I came out of my fantasy and got an idea. Perhaps a nutritious energy drink made from my own milk is just what he needs. I said it aloud smirking as I used a funnel to pour the milk from the bucket into the jug before placing the jug in my mini fridge. Tomorrow he was gonna enjoy a healthy breakfast for sure, or else I do not own at least a dozen all my panties. Finish. Kamori Household. K-I-N-O-K-O -O Kamori P-O-V. Itsuka took us along with her to get supplies saying it so we could chat without the boys trying to listen in like idiots. It was on the way to the supply room that we saw him run by, the super cute second place boy from the entrance exam. He was sporting the female uniform with red high-top shoes and quite frankly I was getting humid down in my mushroom garden. Pony and Setsuna said something but I was too captivated by him to really pay much attention to her. He looks so captivating, even without trying he is in center stage. I said wanting to make my thoughts known about him but too shy to say it any louder than my usual whisper. Warning, I was tending to my share of the family garden as my parents were not coming home tonight so I had the house to myself and nothing to do. Then when I see my mother's broccoli patch I start to think of Izuku Midoriya and how his fluffy head of hair resembled it. Standing up she drops her overalls, then proceeds to slide down her polka-doted white panties down to her ankles. I bent down and plunged my favorite small hand shovel into the dirt. Following that I then used some hand lotion to lubricate the smooth oak handle before standing over it ready to come down on it. In a swift squat down onto it having it go into my PP, feeling my hymen break as I pictured this was Izuku Midoriya PP. The image in my mind was him laying down in the shade of a public park as we fed each other magic mushrooms. Then before the mushrooms take effect he grabs me by my ass and forced me up and down his erected PP. To top it people would pass by and stare at us, make us and our love their top priority, their main focus. Some enjoying the show we are putting on and many scowling at it calling us indecent pigs yet refusing to look away despite their disgust. I kept this up till I had no more strength to move my legs and fell forward into the dirt coming out of my fantasy. The shovel being pulled out of the grounds my PP still clung to it tightly, I rolled over panting. My legs were numb, my favorite gardening tool had a significant amount of my bodily fluids on its handle as a thought occurred. Perhaps I can grow some of those mushrooms and use them to make him an Italian dish for lunch. I pondered before forcing myself up to go shower and make myself dinner. Finish. Takage and Asui Households. Third Person POV. Just this morning both Tsuyu Asui and Setsuna Takage had seen Izuku Midoriya in a skirt. Ever since that moment their loins have been aching greatly and similar if not the same thoughts flooded the minds of these two young maidens. Warning, Izuku in a green one-piece swimsuit a bulge clear and defined as he stared at their erect PPS. WWW what are you gonna do to me? He said as he was approached by either girl in their own dream. Walking up slowly to them he backed away at an equal pace till he tripped and fell turning around in the process. Nothing much Izuku, Deku, I am just going to make sure your lower half knows who is in charge. They said as they got on top of him. Reaching around from behind with one hand they grabbed his shaft through the swimsuit and began jerking him off roughly. Then slipping the back open a bit too. Expose his asshole they lined up their PP to his hole spitting on their hand to give only a slight lubrication to their twitching member. Open you or your ass PP, cause from now on I lead, not you. Izumi-chan. 
they said as they rammed it in with all their might. Izuku released a scream as his rear was violated with no care at all by the girl before, or rather behind him. I will make you my wife Izuku, no better yet I will make you my adorable pet. They thought as they kept thrusting into him, his ass clenching their pee pee for dear life as they soon unleashed their load into him with all they had in their seminal vessels. Finish. Both girls woke up panting with sweat as they had woken up from a dream where they raped Izuku with their PPS. Feeling sore in that region they looked down at their bed sheets to see something sticking up in their pajama pants, underwear soiled. Removing their clothes they saw that now, they had PPS protruding from above their pussies. When they woke upon this morning they were not there, then the feeling they had been feeling there all day started to make sense. Both figured this had something to do to having an amphibious, reptile trait to their quirks. They decided to go speak to Recovery Girl about it in their weird dream tomorrow after school. U-A-H-A-L-L-W-Y-C-L-A-S-S-R-O-O-M Third POV POV It was a new day of school and the girls of the hero course along with a few of the guys were all either giddy or nervous to see Izuku Midoriya. Among the girls who came prepared with a plan to make their move on him two of them had their weapons ready. The third required no weapons for her plan, though she did need to ask a certain women for her help. Pony had woken up early to make Izuku a protein shake using her own melon's milk, and made sure to put it in an insulated water bottle. That way she would also have an excuse to come by after class to see him when she came to pick it up from him. I wonder how he will react when he drinks something that came from my own body. She thought to herself as she hummed a little tune to herself. Along the way she had bumped into someone and spoke briefly with them before continuing to head to her soon-to-be boyfriend. Unaware that she was being followed by her homeroom's class rep Itsuko or big sister as everyone referred to her jokingly. Even if she knew who was following or that she was being followed to begin with, it would not have deterred this American girl from trying. She was like a loyal stead of old, trotting along to the front door of her master who was taking far too long to get ready for their journey. Just like how the horse would nudge the front door open with its nose to poke its head and she used her horns trying to find him before he found her. It was there in his seat he was being mocked by the first place boy from the exam for wearing the female uniform yesterday. Getting upset at the sight of this she launched her horns at the back of the blonde bully head. Like the horse who kicked someone that stopped their master from kicking off their journey. In this case the horse was a girl and the journey was their love journey to inevitably being married one day. Everyone looked to her as surprised as to who it was that attacked the class locally known angry Pomeranian. Hey there you are Izuku Midoriya right. I got a gift for you. She said holding up the insulated water bottle with her homemade drink. Everyone looked at her with their heads peeped to the side as they tried to figure out how she knew their green-haired classmate. Noticing this and the nervous look the green hair cutie of her dreams was giving her she skipped her way up to him. I heard you were the only one with serious injuries out of all your classmates so I made a protein shake to help you so your classmates don't have to worry as much. Pony said as most of the guys looked jealous. Thank you so much for offering your help to our classmate. Your concern for your fellow students is quite commendable. Tenya Ida said chopping his arms in their usual robot-like manner. He was impressed to say the least that despite the rumored rivalry between past class A and B students in the hero course she seemed to want a friendly relationship between them. But why can't I help but feel that there is something else going on here? He thought to himself, it seemed more like she was using us as an excuse than anything. Ida had trouble keeping this thought out of his head but it was stopped when he noticed that girl come in. Thank you for the help. Sorry I if I got your name wrong but I believe you came in ninth place for the entrance exam Tsunotori. Izuku said hoping he got it right. The smile she gave him made him feel relieved that he got it right. You can call me by my first name Pony, so here take your time to savior it. Pony Tsunotori said as she undid the cap about to tilt it to his lips. When suddenly someone hugged her from behind making her drop it. She noticed some orange hair from the corner of her eye realizing who it was that was hugging her. Hey how are you Pony? Itsuka exclaimed as she gave her classmate, rival an embrace where they could not escape to catch her drink. I hope you like your hard work going to waste cowgirl. She thought to herself with a cheery smile on her face, but a smug grin under that mask. Oh no, did I make you spill something? My bad, can you forgive me? Itsuka asked, feigning her worry for messing with her friend's hard work for Izuku. However the giggle she got from Pony made her worry that she had somehow failed. That was when she noticed the bottle still upright but suspended in midair. How is she making it float? She thought trying to figure it out when a suddenly disturbing thought came to mind. Hey there Itsuka, Pony, I'm glad I could help you with your drink problem. Riaiko said from the door frame. Though it was not visible, Itsuka was furious to say the least as to why she interfered with her sabotage. A few minutes earlier in the halls, Riaiko Yanagi was on her way to class when she saw her classmate Pony Tsunotori carrying a water bottle. Realizing what her plan for Izuku may have entailed she approached deciding she was a good partner and ally to have against the others. Hey Pony I have a suggestion for you. Riaiko said getting her blonde classmate to turn around for her. She gave her a curious tilt of the head to indicate she was wondering what it was they were about to say. If you agree to share Izuku with me, then we will work together to win him over. She said as the blonde bombshell of a friend started to clearly think. 
even if I have to share him. If it is with Pony, then I know that she will not go back on this promise. Ryaiko thought this passingly as she had decided the previous night that a three-way relationship with her would be good. While she was silent and level-headed, Pony was enthusiastic and overflowing with happiness together they would be more useful to Izuku than apart. Plus, if she was to be openly honest with herself and her classmates, the self-proclaimed ghost girl had realized something. She discovered she was bisexual when she saw Izuku Midoriya in a dress, and Pony would seem like she would be a great wife to have alongside that boy. Pony was wondering why her classmate, friend was not being tempted to be selfish with Izuku like the rest of them were. Though polygamy was not legal in the USA it was legal in here Japan thanks to how many different temples, religions are practicing the subject. As much as she wanted a marriage like her parents, she had no problem sharing Izuku with another girl. Plus Ryaiko despite looking like she gets very little sleep she was cute, not Izuku level cute, but cute enough she would definitely like cuddling with both of them. Okay then how about we seal the deal wifey? Pony exclaimed confusing Ryaiko with the nickname. Her confusion was short-lived however as the blonde pulled her into a deep kiss on the lips, granted it lasted only 10 seconds or so. However after Pony pulled away this may have been an even better decision than I thought before proceeding to nod back. After that Pony ran to Izuku classroom to give him her gift, however Itsuka was behind her at the corridor she just turned down. Better make sure you do not get to jump on Pony Ryaiko thought as she then followed behind Itsuka who was following behind Pony. Back to the present. Izuku was surprised to have someone be so nice to him, and a stranger at that. Not wanting to waste their kindness the young man picked up the bottle which is when Ryaiko decided to turn off her quirk. Taking a cautious sip his eyes popped wide open making Pony and Ryaiko concerned that it tasted bad. While the rest of his class instantly thought that the rumor rivalry was true and they tricked their class official cinnamon roll. What he was about to say next though brought relief to everyone and made Tenya Aida scold himself internally for second guessing the blonde student from class 1B like he did. This is delicious, Izuku exclaimed as he started chugging it, making Pony incredibly happy. Though the young man made a quizzical face like he was trying to figure something out but was unable to place it. For some reason the milk in this brought my mother to mind. He thought to himself before getting back into focus. It was great Pony, where did you get this milk though? He asked her as she shuffled her feet with a blush on her face twiddling her index finger together. It is a family secret, but you will know one day Izuku. She exclaimed in English as she gave him a peck on the cheek before leaving. Izuku Midoriya was shocked for two reasons, the first being that it was the first kiss he ever received from a girl who was not his mother. Secondly, he was fluent in English to the point where he could erase his accent. As a result, when he had helped a few American tourists in the past they had asked him if he was half American. This meant that he understood her perfectly and the implications of what she just said to him, causing him to go red in the face. She basically just confessed to me. Right. He had asked himself before his classmates pulled him out of his thoughts. Our green-haired hero in training was then hounded by Minor Minda and Denki Kaminari about how he managed to pick her up. The questions only ended after Aizawa Sensei showed up about 10 minutes late telling them all to sit down. Outside on their way back to their class during this 10-minute interrogation Izuku went through, Ryaiko and Pony ended up alone. Okay Pony what did you put in his protein shake? Ryaiko asked wondering what she put in it to make him like it so much. Oh nothing unusual just some vanilla extract, some cinnamon, and my melon's milk. Pony said as though it was no big deal. Her future wife though was shocked when she heard she added her own melon's milk. Pony figuring she was confused about the melon's milk part continued. My ancestor had a cow mutant type quirk, as a result I inherited that aspect of it. She said noticing Ryaiko was fidgeting. Do you mind if I also have a taste from them? Ryaiko said pointing to Pony Melons with a bit of a blush. With how their sweet Izuku reacted when he drank it she could not help but be curious as to how good the milk tasted by itself. Also if she was being frank with herself she felt left out with being the only one in this soon to be three way relationship to not have tasted it. Pony gave her a small smile as she looked up from her lover, comrade shoulders level and directly into her eyes. If you want I can give you a taste in the girls bathroom immediately after school. Pony said happy that she was serious about the three of them becoming an item. Ryaiko being silent as ever nodded grabbing her now lover's hand and bringing them back to their class before they ended up late. UA Recovery Girl Nurse's Office. Third POV POV. It had finally reached the end of the day and two green-haired girls who sat out of the Hero Foundation's class today were making their way to the nurse's office. Neither of them knowing that the other was going there for the same reason until they met outside the door. Both were a bit lost in nervous thought and did not notice the other until they reached for the door handle at the same time. This resulted in them bumping into one another and looking confused. Tsuyu Asui was the first to break the silence that fell upon them. Why are you here? Hiro. She asked the other girl wondering what had brought her here. A. Unexpected medical reason. Setsuna Takage said hopping it was not obvious this cutie was making her hard. All day she was trying to suppress her unyielding boner as she began to take more notice of her female classmates. What our body-splitting future heroine did not know was that Tsuyu Asui had similar problems. Almost getting discovered herself when Mina jokingly groped her from behind when she first tried to sit out of the class exercise. Setsuna noticed how Asui was standing oddly and realized she was standing similarly all day herself trying to hide her new appendage. 
Does she also have one? Crossed her mind before she decided to just get it over with. So she grabbed a suey in her crotch and gave it a good squeeze before she could be shoved off, hitting pay dirt. You have a penis too. She exclaimed as the frog girl whipped her in the face with their tongue. Suey was Suey was confused as she herself was a blunt person, but not even she would just grab someone's crotch just cause she felt like it. I do not have a you have a penis too. She exclaimed as the other girl gave her a shark tooth like grin. Damn straight I have a penis, but I still can't believe you have one as well. Setsuna said genuinely surprised herself and for once not mocking the other person or joking with them. I could say the same about you, though I doubt your penis is bigger than mine. Suey was Suey said with her usual bluntness as she was fairly confident in herself no matter the subject. That was when the door was slammed open with recovery girl looking like she was about to blow a gasket at the two of them. Will you boys go talk about your penises somewhere a lady does not need to hear? She yelled at the girls with her cane raised. The two heroes in training put their hands to their crotched hearing that supposedly painful for guys without realizing unlike men their seminal vesicles were inside not on the outside. Recovery girl looked to both sides before turning back to the girls lowering her cane, but confused as to why they had their hands covering their crotches. Sorry girls, there were some boys just outside the door shouting about their penises in public so I was a tad upset at them. The old woman said as she noticed both girls going red. That was us actually, Setsuna said as she got over her embarrassment before Asui, granted she barely did so. Looking back and forth between the two of them recovery girl let out a long sigh already knowing this somehow had to involve Izuku. Come in and lock the door, it sounds like there is a long story behind this. She said as they nodded and followed both her and her instructions. So let me guess you two saw Izuku in the female uniform and fantasized about him dressed in other kinds of women clothing. She asked them as they looked at each other before nodding to her. Well the thing is, I do not know about Asui but my fantasy involved me. Kind of dominating and ass raping Izuku, Setsuna said as looking back to Asui. The frog girl nodded indicating that she too had a similar kind of fantasy about him. If one were to describe how Recovery Girl felt right now, she was more pissed than Nezu after Power Loader accidentally destroyed his cheese collection warehouse. Right now she wanted to break not just her cane but all several dozen spares Nezu keeps around for her over their heads. Yes Izuku was not her actual grandson she knew that, but it did not help this old woman resist the urge to cause bodily harm to these two students. Deciding she would likely lose it if she did not say something she decided to take it easy on them and make it brief. I made an oath as hero, an oath as a doctor, and an oath as a teacher, and not even all three of those combined will save you two from my wrath. She threatened them causing them both to go paler than Ryaiko. She felt her anger wash away as she thought about how Izuku would feel if he found out she threatened them on his behalf. That being said, I know Izuku would forgive you too and try to help you if he found out, as such I will hold myself back on certain conditions. Recovery girl said as the two students calmed down beginning to smile. First off, you two will go to mandatory therapy sessions with Hound Dog three times a week after school to learn to control these new urges. Cause if I find out either of you two lose control and actually do rape him. Well I know how to easily dispose of your bodies if you do. She said as the two nodded nervously thinking she had finally calmed down only to threaten them again. Second, you two will not be allowed to be alone with Izuku unless supervised by a teacher and I will be making sure Aizawa, Vlad King, and All Might All now of this along with your current situation. Recovery girl added seeing them both embarrassed, most likely from having more people find out about this. Finally, when you two are ready to come out to your classmates about this, all you have to do is ask and I will be there beside you too. She said smiling as she knows how stressful it was for Tiger from the wild wild pee pee cats. Why 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 you mean it? Setsuna was shocked to see how supportive she was. Despite them telling her they fantasies of raping who was clearly her favorite student as pretty much everyone at UA could tell. As a hero, as a doctor, and as a teacher I will always give you students the support you need no matter you do. Recovery girl said standing up on her seat to pat the heads of the two students sitting across from her. As the girls began to cry she knew she made the right choice, after all she wants to set the right example for Izuku. And ko I promise I will be deserving of your forgiveness when we finally meet again, wherever you are. She thought as the girls were still letting out all their tears and worries they had about how they would be treated when they told someone of this. U-R-A-R-A-K-A household. Third person POV. The Uraka family was eating dinner when the youngest of them Achako Uraka had spoken up gaining the attention of the older two. After seeing the assertiveness of that blonde girl from class 1B she decided she could no longer wait to make her move. Dad can I get some advice from you? She asked her father hesitantly. The man did not miss this and though stoic on the outside, began to worry about what his daughter was about to ask. Go ahead sweetie ask away. He said taking a sip of his water. Please tell me she did not get into a fight with a rich classmate. Unable to prevent such thoughts from appearing the mind of this cash-strapped construction business owner. Okay dad is calm. All I need to do is make sure I do not stutter and get it out in one go she thought to herself psyching herself up. How would I seduce a girl? She asked seeing her father do a spit take that reached all the way to the wall behind her. She was worried that her father was now angry at her for being into girls. Granted she did not know yet that Izuku was actually a boy and she is currently thinking he is girl who is going through a gender identity crisis right now. 
Oh my, I'll win the bet dear looks like we are getting the fashion channel instead of the football channel, said as she giggled. Noticing that her daughter seemed confused the mother decided to let her daughter know of the wager in detail. Me and your father were arguing over which channel we would pay for now that we are getting a little extra money coming in. So we made a bet as to whether you are into girls or boys, winner gets the channel they wanted. She said as her daughter went slack-jawed at this. Tom Brady the third, forgive me, got on his knees and cried out in despair. As a big American football fan and fan of the New England Patriots he was devastated he could not watch his games as often as he wanted to now. Achaka went from confused to upset when her parents gambled on her love life like it was game. I cannot believe you too. She shouted at her parents as she stood up from his seat instantly. Calm down honey, do you still want your father advice or not? Asked sidestepping her daughter's anger but redirecting her attention. This was a technique she used in business negations for contracts all the time, as such she has mastered it to a capital T. Oh 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 right. Dad can you give me any tips? Achako asked as her father finally stopped crying on the floor. What kind of a girl is she? He asked now invested in his daughter future and possible daughter-in-law one day. She is really smart, kind, a bit clumsy, despite being a bit cowardly she is courageous when she needs to be. She has a habit of mumbling when she gets lost in thought, though she is timid most of the time but that just makes me want to protect her more. Then she realized she was going on like Deku and blushed heavily covering her face in embarrassment. Her parents on the other hand were grinning at this thinking how wonderful this girl sounded. After a few minutes to think on what he was told he gave his daughter the best plan he could. First off do not come on too strong and get closer to her little by little. He said as his daughter nodded vigorously. Secondly try to help boost her confidence so when you do ask her out she will not say no thinking you could do better than her. Me and your mother know that one from experience. Said laughing, at least until his wife elbowed him. Achako found this amusing that her assertive mother who always glows with confidence was once similar to her adorable Deku. Oh by the way can you show us a picture of her? Asked her daughter as Achako showed her parents two pictures. One was Deku in the boy's uniform the other in the girl's uniform. Both parents tilted their heads in confusion. Why was she trying to pass herself off as a boy at school? She asked her daughter, seeing her little Zero-G clearly trying to figure it out as well. I wonder if they will be wearing a suit or a dress at the altar in about five years thought wanting them to hold the ceremony as soon as possible. On that note, your goal is to invite her over to our house for dinner before the summer break. She said not as a request but as a matter of fact. J.I.R.O. Household Third person POV Kayoka Jairo was practicing her guitar in her room trying to gather her thoughts about Izuku Midoriya. It was frustrating for the young girl that she had to admit that a boy was cuter than her in girls' clothes. But at the same time, it made her okay with being a tomboy as it also made her imagine herself dominating the fellow student. Warning, she had just finished her concert as fans of both her hero career and music career gave her one last cheer. As she had walked to the left side of the stage towards her dressing room she saw her husband standing there. In their black mini skirt, also with thigh-high stocking colored in black and white stripes. To compliment the skirt she gave him earlier before coming to the gig a pair of purple frilly panties. One of her concert t-shirts was worn underneath his elbow-length black jacket with a silver skull belt. On his ears he had silver heart-shaped earrings with a ruby in each of them, his green hair tied back in a ponytail. Come on hot stuff. She whispered into his ear after kissing him, she then walked him back to her dressing room. Once inside she dropped his skirt and placed both his hands on the surface of her mirror stand where she began stroking his member. With one ear jack she wrapped it around his shaft as she used the tip against his tip sending her own heartbeat through it, stimulating it as she then put the other one up his ass doing the same thing causing him to moan loudly. That's a baby, tell me who is the master of that tight ass of yours. She shouted seeing his legs wobble from both pleasure and exhaustion as they had done it before her show as well. Just as he was about to reach his climax and let it all out for her, someone kicked down the door to her room finish. Coming to her senses as her fantasy ended she sees her mother's stern glare like she always saw when she did something wrong. Seeming to become fed up with her for not responding right away, she clicked her tongue in annoyance before sighing. Your phone was connected to the Bluetooth speaker downstairs. Myself, your father, and even our neighbors at one point could hear your moaning. She said whipping her earphones on her palms. Kayoka would be shaking in fear if she was not mortified about her neighbors hearing her moan. I was not aware of that I swear. She exclaimed with her head in her hands. Still she had yet to have noticed the small puddle by the side of her bed and the stain on her pants. Now who is her mother was cut off as her father came running and slightly panting. Who is the boy that corrupted my baby girl? He shouted only for his wife to put her earphone jack into his ear. Using her heartbeat like her daughter does to attack, she caused her husband pain for cutting her off. As I was going to say who is he? Also show me a picture, said holding her hand out. They are a classmate in my hero class, I swear I have not done anything with them. Yet, she said as she handed them over her phone. She pulled up the only picture she had of him, which was the recent one Mina sent of him in the girl's uniform. Her parents gave her puzzled looks before speaking up saying something that would make her blush deeply. Are you into girls or crossdressers? Asked her daughter causing the girl to go red as she realized what the picture of him was. Oh my god this is going to be so awkward. Kayoka screamed to herself internally knowing she was gonna get grilled. 
Either way, they are cute, so I approve. However, I need you to keep in mind something important. Just because they have an apparently tight ass that you are the master of does not mean you can do such things before the marriage takes place. She said to her daughter laughing smugly as her daughter almost passed out with steam practically coming out of her ears. Yayo Yayo Rozu household. Third person POV. Momo Yayorazu was so tense that even her parents could tell how tense she was before they even looked at her. This made them wonder what could do this to their always well-composed daughter who rarely gave anything other than a thin smile. For the past two days though they noticed she was a bit distracted almost bumping into the walls a few times if not for maids redirecting her. Also whenever she was lost in thought during these moments she held a large smile with a deep blush while mumbling. If it was a boy then that would be good news for the parents as their daughter has shown no interest in boys no matter how many CEO sons they introduced her to. If we are lucky the young man in question is a crossdresser like normal. Thought to herself before another thought came back to mind. One of the maids was able to make out a name from the mumbling. Izuku, it was a name unfamiliar to them except for some chatter they recently heard. Information leaked recently from someone in the number 2 Hero Endeavor Hero Agency that All Might had a child in the UA Hero course. That the child name had apparently started with an I or an E, most who heard this leaked info had assumed it was someone from the first year Hero class. The fact that this person she is mumbling about has a name that starts with an I was a possibly good thing for the Ayurazu family if the rumor was true. It seemed that today they would finally determine if their theory was correct or not. Mother, father, I need to ask you two for permission. Momo asked her parents straightening her back still standing. Sit down dear and tell us what it is you need permission for. Asked her daughter after giving her instructions. If it was what she thought it was then they could thrust Yayurazu Industries to new heights. I, I want your permission to date a cross-dressing boy from my class. Momo said bowing to her parents while she was still down. Ever since she started thinking about Izuku like that, she was also worried that her parents would disapprove and say no. When the young heiress looked up after few moments of silence she saw her mother grinning like a Cheshire cat and her dad holding back a chuckle. Of course honey, this was expected to happen, in fact I was worried why it was taking you so long. She said as her daughter answered with a dumbfounded look. Finding her daughter's lack of understanding was as amusing as it always has been since she was little. You see it is a common thing in the women of the Ayurazu to be attracted to cross-dressing men. Said as she hugged her husband lightly resting her head on his shoulder. Dad is a crossdresser. Momo could not help but exclaim as she could never picture her father in a dress. Then her mother showed her a picture of a younger her with a cute girl with the same hair and eye color as her. Father, so I take it from this picture both of you prove of me liking him. She asked handing back the picture hoping this was a yes. Of course we will. So long as you remember you call the shots as such you have to tame that cutie like a proper women of the Ayurazu family. Said giving a tense glare at her daughter making her nod. Momo was worried as she wanted to take it slowly like the relationships in her romance manga that she always likes to read. Also how good are his grades? What is he like in terms of intelligence? She said raising an eyebrow needing to make sure he could at least take the seat of CEO like her husband did. Momo took a deep breath as she knew this could determine whether or not she can continue to pursue him as a possible lover. His grades in every class is perfect, except hero foundational studies. She had noticed her parents giving her an odd look at this. He is a late bloomer, apparently he just got his quirk shortly before the exam day so his body is still adjusting to it overwhelming power. Momo said as her parents seemed to have been relieved by this information. As for intelligence, according to what I heard our homeroom teacher once said, Principal Nezu gave him an IQ test and found out his fall short only of Principal Nezu. She told them seeing their shocked faces that without an intelligence quirk he is just as smart as the most intelligent individual in all of Japan. Though I do not know if this means anything, but I have seen All Might walk him to his office a few times. Momo told them swearing she could see a glint in both her mother's eyes. Starting from this day onward I will train you in how to train your cross-dressing boy okay. Said as she leaned forward resting her elbows on her knees and her head in her palms. Momo knew that both she and Izuku were going to be in for it, but she had to admit it. Her mother's aggressive approach was likely her best bet assuming she was not the only girl among the two hero course classes to have fallen for Izuku. H-A-G-A-K-U-R-E household. Toro H-A-G-A-K-U-R-E P-O-V. I invited Mina over to my house that day to go over clothes we thought would look good on our class's cinnamon roll, Izuku Midoriya. After seeing him in the girl's uniform, both me and Mina decided we wanted to see that cute boy dressed like that more often. Also both of us wanted to get a piece of his cute ass, and that was before we ever saw him in a skirt like that. For me it was after the entrance exam where I was saved by him from a robot attack I could not dodge in time. Granted with how very few points I managed to get I would have just barely passed, so unfortunately had next to no time to worry about him. But after seeing how he took down the zero pointer in one shot I had no doubt someone that strong would not pass the exam. Then came the day he showed in the girl's uniform after he saved us Aizawa sensei in the USJ. I knew that I had managed to find someone who was as much of a powerhouse as he was a cutie. There was now way I was letting him slip through my fingers without a fight. Mina ASHIDOPOV. I was drawn immediately towards him during the first day of class where he stood up to Aizawa bullying him. It was really cool of him how he stood his ground and proved their teacher wrong for looking down on him like he was doing. 
Then at the USJ he led Su Chan and Minda to safety when the three were surrounded by villains in the water. But that day when he showed up in the female student school uniform, I was getting slimy down there to say the least. Those stockings really did show off how muscular and well-toned his legs were from what I had assumed was hard training. And damn did I have a hard time not imaging him choking me with those sexy legs of his. Though I will not deny that his ass is just as appealing as his legs, and this was coming from me, a leg kink master of all people. Fortunately no one seemed to notice my puddle under my desk as we were all focused on Izuku that day in class. So today I met up with Toru at her house after school to see what things from her wardrobe we could get Izuku to wear. Tomorrow we will go to my house and do the same thing then invite him over to my house as my parents will be busy working late. I would have waited a little longer to act if not for the fact that the horn girl from 1B already made a move on him today. If another girl makes an attempt tomorrow I swear I will melt their shoe locker with my acid without a second thought. UANZU office. NAZU POV. Recovery girl had told me of a rather disturbing yet intriguing problem that was beginning to grow in the pants or rather skirts of some of my students. Asui as well as Takage had developed something new on their bodies that may pose a concern for midoriya virginity. This is how I had come to this moment where I had her, Hound Dog, Eraser Head, and Vlad King in my office to discuss this issue thoroughly. Hound Dog was practically sweating bullets clearly trying to rack his brain thinking of most likely the worst case scenario knowing him. The racer was keeping his usual calm visage but was either scared of recovery girl, which is highly likely considering his past with her as a former student. Though if I had to place my bet, it is most likely due to the fact that Midoriya is in this scenario both mentally and physically at risk. With Asui having potential for only the mental if she actually does snap and goes at her classmate, she will most definitely be filled with regret and shame afterwards if it happens. Then there was Vlad also a former student of UA with a student of his own in the exact same situation. Despite that girl's usual PPY attitude I am doubtful she could handle the gravity of her actions either if she also did something. Midnight like towards Midoriya. It was amusing that unlike Aizawa who showed next to no emotion at all, this man wore his heart on his sleeve. So his fear of the small old lady in the room was evident as a single glance from her was all it took to make him whip his head around and away from her. Third person POV. A group of teachers had just finished listening to what recovery girl had to tell them about two female students. Sui was Sui, and Satsuna Takage had made a rather disturbing confession to the nurse that has also caused great worry among the others. Principal Nezu was silently sitting down analyzing everyone's reaction already thinking of things to suggest to do for the students. Hound Dog who was the school's guidance counselor and had never had to deal with a situation like this. Before it was Midoriya who needed his focus the most out of his class, but now two more students. These students' problems also had the potential to snowball out of control if they do not handle it properly. Right now he was sweating bullets as he was trying to figure out an alternative to whatever training Hell Nezu probably has planned already. However, no matter how the man racked his brain he could not think of anything other than forced meditation or chastity belts. Originally they were made only for women, but then Midnight Ancestor experimented with teasing their male partners and made one for men. Hound Dog was truly grateful that Midnight has yet to invent something like her ancestor did. He really hoped he did not raise a red flag just now. Eraserhead was doing two things after he had heard what he just did from Recovery Girl Mouth. If this was, well anyone else except for her and Nezu he would strangle them with his scarf for making an offensive joke about his student. But he knows she would never joke about a student health like this or about Izuku Midoriya health. In fact when she called him and mic'd down to her office for what happened to said student, she ended up breaking several of her canes over his and his annoying friend heads. Granted she healed them, but she did so over and over again, which is how she broke several canes over their heads. He really hated that Nezu put aside a budget separately for her canes, especially since the mouse knows what they will end up used for by her. The first thing the sleep-deprived hero was doing was trying to wrap his head around this current mess. How in the love of hell has one of his better students now become at risk of raping one as more mentally and emotionally at risk students? He understood the actual process of course, he was not an idiot, it was more of how Midoriya managed to cause this whole mess just by cross-dressing. They understood how a person mindset or mental condition can physically affect their body. But this was a first he has ever heard of something this extreme and he has seen some crazy quirks in his career. To be so sexually attracted to someone you grew genitalia of the opposite gender. The second thing he was trying to do was to just like the others figure out a solution. One of his first ideas was a self-control exercise where they would experience more pain. That is only when they think certain types of thoughts of Izuku Midoriya, but he immediately turned down his own idea. Knowing that Tiger had a hard time themselves when they came out so to speak, he had a rough idea of what they might end up going through. Deciding that for once this was one kind of mental trauma where the benefits of overcoming did not outweigh the risks he tried to think of something else. Perhaps we could take the risk of having Midnight help them. He thought to himself hoping for once Vlad came up with a better idea than him. As the pro hero did not usually trust or rather believe his other colleague Hound Dog to be able to think of a useful idea in such an odd scenario. Vlad King on the other hand was confident he could keep his student under control unlike Eraserhead. 
On top of that, unlike the hobo with his students who he pits against each other in cutthroat exercises to push them to be number one as individuals, he emphasizes teamwork with his students as he works with other hero agencies in the field often. So he did not need to worry about the emotional trauma Setsuna would experience from this, as he already knew she could fall back on her classmates for support during this. That being said, he had to still figure out how to prevent the worst-case scenario from happening. As much as I do not like to admit, this scenario may fall under midnight expertise he thought as Hound Dog cleared his throat. After the dog man had cleared his throat to get everyone's attention he steeled himself for the backlash from his suggestion. I believe we may need use those male chastity belts Midnight Ancestor made. He said expecting the BLD hero and the sleep-deprived hero to punch him for what even he thought was a ludicrous suggestion. However both looked at him relieved for some reason as they then spoke up one after another making him regret that he seemed right. I do not like to admit this, but I think we may need that exhibitionist help. As I was said before letting out a sigh. For once I agree with the hobo, this may require Midnight's help. Vlad King said clearly hating that he agrees with Aizawa. Recovery Girl let out her own sigh as she rubbed her temples before speaking up. Nezu on the other hand, if the others were paying attention to him would have seen him look worried for the briefest of seconds. I do not like this, but if she can keep those two girls from traumatizing Izuku and themselves I will approve of asking her. She said in clear displeasure of exposing them to her right now. Now that we have a clear course of action, I will go tell Midnight we need her help with some physical exercises. Nezu said taking a sip of his tea. The others gave slightly uncertain nods but none voiced a problem with their group decision. Though to be on the safe side I suggest we have them meet at least twice a week with Hound Dog to check on their mental health throughout this process. He said as the others agreed once again. With that the teachers concluded their private meeting and left his office so Nezu could make a call to midnight. This was now the second time this week he would be having a meeting with the women. Hopefully this one will not end up risky for young Midoriya. U-A-H-A-L-L-W-A-Y-C-L-A-S-S-R-O-O-M Third person POV. As people were making their way to their classrooms many were keeping an eye out for a certain individual. Such individuals were greeted by the sight of their target sitting in their desk nervously waiting. The first of the people were surprisingly the ones who come usually last to class Mina Ashido and Toru Hagakura. Both saw the boy and ran over to him to give their greetings among other things. Hey Midori, Mina said waving to him as she bounced on the toes of her feet. Morning Izuku, Toru said also waving to him with one leg lifted an inch off the ground behind her. Izuku was shocked as to why his classmates are suddenly trying to chat him up, especially the girls. On top of that they were using a nickname and his first name to refer to him instead of his last name. HHH Hi Ishido. Hi Hagakure. You don't have to force yourself to be informal with me you know. He said as he waved back at the two of them. No 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 no, just no Midori. Mina said wiggling her finger at him for using their last names. We called you by your first name cause we want to be your friends. That means you call us by our first names as well. Toru said poking his riot red cheek. I am not sure that. Izuku was about to say he was not sure if he should but then he saw the stern look Ishido was giving him. Understood Mina, Toru. He responded straightening himself. Good job. Now all you have to do is be a bit less stiff. Mina said leaning forward causing him to blush. A few minutes later of talking fashion with him, though it was all women fashion. Something he did not have a personal interest in but decided it would be helpful knowledge when it came his mother's next birthday. Another pair of the girls will enter the classroom a few minutes later. They were known as Achako Yuraka and Kayo Kajiro. Both had arrived separately at school but met in the hallway by chance and began talking. Their conversation on the way quickly turned to Izuku. I gotta admit, that despite him being a boy I was jealous as girl by how cute he was. While I practically look like a boy, Kayoka said with a sigh at the end. Though she was genuinely saddened by it, the thought of putting that cute boy in his place under her was a somewhat comforting thought. At the same time however it embarrassed the girl to even imagine herself doing something that intense, let alone doing it. You're cute to Kayoka. In fact I want to cuddle you as much as I do Deku. Achako said grabbing the other girl hands. She said this serious about how she thought Kayoka was as cute as her crush. If anything Kayoka being the tomboy she was made her cuter in Achako opinion. When I take a close look at her face I really do feel like cuddling her as much as I want to with Deku Achako thought to herself as she took a close look into her classmate's face. Kayoka Jiro was shocked that someone was calling her cute and saying things like they wanted to cuddle with her. She was kind of hoping for Izuku to be the first one to tell her something like that, but it was also kind of nice to hear it from Achako. You really think so? She questioned her classmate, part of her thinking it might be a way to make fun of her later. Then again if Achako is being honest, then maybe I could give girls a try if I end up getting rejected by Izuku. She thought to herself before she was suddenly hugged by Achako. Stop putting yourself down Kayoka. Achako raised her voice unintentionally as she brought the girl into a tight hug. Though not intentionally raising her voice she had what she felt was bigger worries for her right now than catching the attention of other students. She is just like Deku. I need to boost her confidence in her looks as well. She thought to herself not intending to woo the girl like Izuku. That being said, little did she know that she had captured some small part of this rocker girl's heart. Whether this will bloom into something else. Well that will be left to be seen later down the line. 
When the two girls finished a rather quiet walk back to the classroom they saw Mina and Toru talking about fashion with him. Achako thinking how nice it was for Deku to get used to discussing things that a regular girl usually talks about. Kayoka on the other hand was happy on the outside but torn on the inside at the scene before her. On one hand talking to those two about fashion will lead to him becoming cuter hopefully. On the other hand however the cuteness gap between would grow larger. They quickly made their way over to join the conversation with them so as not to be left behind. Hey Deku, you are wearing the boy's uniform today. She asked the girl who was pretending to be a boy. They nodded back yes in slight confusion as to why she pointed their uniform specifically. That's a shame. You looked really cute in the girl's uniform. Achako said winking at him, while well, trying to. All she did was close both her eyes for a second. Either way her compliment made him go red in the face. I agree. Your legs looked really good in those tights when the uniform got on you. Kayoka said twirling her thumbs behind her back. Izuku was now covering his face and stammering trying to piece together a response for the two of them. See, we told you that you look good in girls' clothes. Mina said pulling him into a hug. Naturally Toru joined in cause unlike the other two they were not shy about physical contact with him. Just a few minutes before class started Momo finally came in as the last one surprising everyone as she is usually one of the first. What the young heiress was about to do next would shock them even more than before. Get up Izuku, she said in an affirmative tone. Izuku Midoriya responded as every timid little mouse does, he obeyed but was prepared to run. She then grabbed his ass with one hand in a way so that the tips of her fingers just barely grazed the entrance to his supple ass. Good boy, make sure to take care of this booty okay, Momo said as she used the other hand to pat his cheek making him go as red as Kirishima hair. Afterwards she walked back to her desk trying to ignore the stares and hanging jaws. It was fortunate for her she could remember her mother's training yesterday to ignore it in her own embarrassment. I can't believe I actually did that, and in front of so many people. She thought to herself as her mind went back to yesterday in vivid detail. Momo flashback. I was standing in the middle of my room in my birthday suit as my mother circled me looking me up and down. Then the head maid came in with a cart that when she lifted the cloth revealed it was full of devices and tools that I assume are sexual in nature given how they are shaped. Mother chuckled as the head maid came forward after closing the door. Apologies for the delay madam but I am now ready to continue my duty a third time. She bowed her head to my mother. It seemed that she noticed my confused look and smiled a rather dark smile that made my spine shiver. I assisted in training your grandmother, mother, and now you in the art of girly boy breaking. They said with a pleasant tone that did not match her startling face right now. Oh god what is mother gonna teach me to do? I could not help but think as they began lubricating something. It was long and with a massive girth. If I could not tell any better I would say it was a replica of a male genitalia. In order to one day learn how to subdue a man in his ass, you must learn how it feels yourself. She said before grabbing my ass, her fingertips just grazing my asshole. This technique is used to send a message to the man we are after that they are ours. Mother said as she turned around lifting up the back of her skirt. Now my lady, you will use the same technique on your mother till she deems you have learned it to a satisfactory degree. Said the head maid as I saw her putting the tool near my rear entrance. Every time you fail it will increase in vibrating strength starting at 1 going all the way to 11. They said as they rammed and almost completely up my ass. It took me everything I had to hold back my scream as I felt it stretching my ass wider. I suggest you be a fast learner like always, otherwise the other maids may hear your moans and come in to see you sexually assaulting your mother in your lewdly dressed state. Mother said sneering at me before turning back around. I managed to hold my moans in until I got it right on setting 8, but after falling down to my knees. After they left I could not hold my tears back and began crying from both shame and the pain in my ass. I never want to inflict this kind of pain on Izuku. I want a genuine romance with him like I always read about in my romance manga. This thought was the last thing I thought before passing out under my covers naked too tired to bother putting on clothes. The small puddle I made from before due to the device shined in the moonlight. It was reflecting the somewhat comforting sight of the moon indicating the day was truly over. Midnight Private. Training Ground. Third Person POV. Midnight had just walked her two students to the love hotel she owns as per Nezu request. At first the heroine had thought it would be a boring assignment, until she found out the details. Two naughty students needed to be taught self-control before her ship could be sunk to the bottom of the proverbial love sea. Both green-haired girls were nervous, fortunately for them their new quote-unquote mistress allowed them to change out of their school uniforms. As they reached the hotel the clerk nodded her head to them as Midnight led them to a secure door requiring certain DNA to enter. Among them were Midnight and her other former students that she had hired as trainers for the new students. Nezu ignored it cause the prostitutes she ended up training were always reliable tippers for underground heroes. As for why he would allow two of his students to be exposed to such a thing. Well recovery girl was someone you did not want to get in the way of. Especially since a letter from her would be all it took for people to start limiting Nezu tea supply to the bare minimum. Something the animal principle would rather not happen. Suyu Asui and Setsuna Takage both looked at each other with worry as they made their way past the door down the staircase. What it was that had the two girls worried were the sounds of whip and moaning coming from the bottom of the staircase. As they saw the light of the room at the bottom and took the last step to enter they saw a sight that made them almost die from embarrassment. 
There were triangular wooden posts with naked women sitting on them wearing many different things. Some had gags, some had blindfolds, some had their arms tied behind their backs with ropes going around their melons, and some had a combination of the three. All stopped to turn in their direction when midnight whistled to everyone. First things first, blindfolds off to watch the following. Midnight said as the blindfolds were undone one by one. Now they were being gazed at with lust by all the women who were thinking they were their new sisters. Now, strip it all, she said as the two students gulped, but complied after their teacher lashed her whip at them. Everyone looked both shocked and turned on when they saw both of their lower half to see the erections they got when they came down. That and most likely how they had both genitalia, to show themselves to a bunch of random women doing lewd acts was already well beyond their comfort zones. Some were quite literally drooling as they stared at the two girls before them. Listen up everyone, you all came here to be women of culture like me, Midnight said with a sultry slur. The two students questioned why anyone would purposely want to be a pervert when they noticed some of the girls were recently debuted pro heroes. These two ladies had recently acquired their male genitalia, so to prevent them from losing their self-control potentially rape a fellow student. We shall teach them to control their inner pervert so they do not cross that line, but still know how to be sexy. She finished with a wink. The two were brought to one of the triangular wooden bench like the others made to face each other. After that they were gauged and tied up similar to the other girls but the ropes were also tied around their PPS. Now listen up, I am going to show you some dirty pictures I had an artist friend of mine draw of Midoriya. Midnight said sneering at the two new hatchlings Nezu gave her. This news shocked the girls as they realized it would mean they would suffer more and more. Now as you can see the ropes were tied in a way that they will tighten every time you get harder. When they tighten your middle and index finger on both hands will go slowly up your asses little by little. She said making them realize they were about to get an idea as to what kind of pain they dreamed of putting Izuku ass through. UA nurse's office. Third person POV. Oh, Izuku Midoriya exclaimed as recovery girl just hit him over the head for stuttering again while practicing his speech skills. A young man did not know what brought on her sudden interest in teaching him how to make a proper speech. Do it again from the top, and again no stuttering. Recovery girl scolded him before making him swallow a few nutrient gummy, before using her quirk. Not only is Toshi failing to teach him how to use the quirk, he has yet to teach the kid how not to be a stuttering mess like Izuku currently is. She thought to herself with a sigh. It was at times like this the heroine seriously did consider calling Gran Torino, then asking Nezu if he would bring the old fool out of retirement temporarily to help train Izuku, and maybe teach the Bakugo kid how to respect his teachers or people in general. It is an honor to be here before both all you citizens and fellow heroes to S. Seitha he said before getting whacked in the head again by her cane. At least I managed to get further than last time. He thought to himself hoping he could get back to physical training. He appreciated what the old hero was doing for him, he truly did. But learning how to stop stuttering turned out to be harder than he thought it would be when she suggested it to him. That was when he noticed how late it was and realized his mom was probably waiting for him to come home. After all he already needed to turn down Mina offer to come to her house saying he needed to get ready for the sports festival however this was supposed to help. Sorry recovery girl mamam is gone if I'd knock a thumb in time. Izuku Midoriya said in a jumbled up mess before running out. Most people would think that recovery girl like most people would not understand his mumbling. But in actuality both her, her daughter, and granddaughter all had a bad habit of mumbling. As such she understood him perfectly well I hope his mother will be gentler than I was with him, especially since I may be the reason he will get in trouble. She said to herself putting her things away before leaving for the evening. M-I-D-O-R-I-Y-A household. I-N-K-O-P-O-V. Hizuku had been getting home later than usual lately, which was beginning to bother me. At first it was because of all his extra training to catch up to the other kids who had their quirks for years. Granted his intense training kept on having him come home with bruises that were for some reason almost completely faded. Such healing rates could only be done by. No there is no way that she knows who he is. I thought to myself trying to get that wretched women out of my mind. Before I knew it the conversation I had with his doctor the day before he was told that he was quirkless started to come back as well. Stop it. I do not need to remember such things right now. I said out loud to myself shaking my own head. Then again the past few days he has been coming home with no new bruises, yet he was still staying out later than he used to. Though it may be a bit inappropriate as to how I came to know about his bruises it was for his own good. Ever since I brought him to his bed passed out that day when he was five years old, where I saw the burn and bruises I checked every night when he was asleep. As he got older I had to slip sleeping medicine into his dinner to make sure he was unconscious when I checked on him. It hurts me that he does not tell me when he gets injured, but then again that is just like his great-grandfather. Always putting his own health aside to protect others like a stubborn fool, but unlike his great-grandfather he was much more reckless with his life. As I was about to call him the door opened and I heard my baby boy come in at last. Sorry I got home late mom. He said squirming slightly in his usual nervous behavior. It was as adorable as usual, but at the same time it made me worried as I could see no sign of his movements being hindered by injury. Yet again he is not doing training yet he is staying out late. Guess I should just ask him. Sit down Izuku while I bring your plate over. I said as he nodded and sat down as he was told. After a few minutes of eating our curry in silence I asked him the question. 
If you don't mind, could you tell me why you were staying out late? I asked him, seeing him get excited to tell me. I was getting extra training from one of the teachers at school for the sports festival. He said, grinning ear to ear. It was so adorable like how a baby bunny rabbit wiggled its nose before letting out a very quiet sneeze. Oh my, was it your homeroom teacher? She assumed the bruises came from him. According to her son, the man had intense training methods to say the least, well from his perspective. Compared to her grandfather, his teaching methods seemed much more merciful from what she remembered of her grandfather method. No, actually, it was recovery girl who has been helping me a lot lately. He said with an embarrassed look on his face with his eyes closed. It was a good thing his eyes were closed at that moment, otherwise he would have seen my facial expression at that moment. I could tell my anger at hearing that name was showing on my face along with one of my eyes twitching. Fortunately I took a quiet deep breath and regained my poker face before going to a dark thought. Is that women trying to take my son affection away from me? I could not help but have this thought cross my mind. I already lost my husband and I already took measures when he was younger to make sure she could never influence him to leave me as well. Yet somehow that damned hag is already slowly taking him from me. Did she figure it out and tell him? Say Izuku, do you remember what I told you about your grandmother when you were little? I asked seeing him turn stiff instantly. This told me she told him something. But not the whole truth otherwise he would be freaking out right now. With that she decided to take Izuku off her from the principal for the parents of the hero students to get front row seats. At first she was going to decline but now she felt that it was probably best to keep an eye on his interactions during it. Midnight Private. Training Ground. Midnight POV. I was disappointed beyond what any word or possible combination of words could possibly describe. It took the two students 4.63 seconds to get stiff at a drawing of Izuku in a dress with an upskirt reveal. To be fair it was done by a well-renowned artist that was a personal friend of mine. I cannot believe it took you two literally less than five seconds to get hard from looking at erotic cross-dressing photo of Izuku. I scolded them as they closed their eyes before shaking their heads. After a few more minutes, between their lack of experience with their new male genitals, as well as my expertly done knots they were already on the verge of letting it all loose. With a sigh I gave the two former students of mine the signal to undo the two UA students' bindings. The moment the gags and ropes fell to the ground the two girls fell off their wooden horses letting out moans I never expected them to ever let out. Their loads were released during this time causing them shoot their cum into the other girl mouth. Both ended up swallowing it as they gasped for air after moaning like they did. I made sure to videotape this whole experience as per recovery girl request. To think that the old women despite asking me to help them, still wanted to see their suffering herself. Perhaps it was a bad idea to make that deal for the sports festival. I thought to myself as I had to hide my nervous chuckle from thinking of recovery girl wrath falling onto me as well. Alright you two, we are far from done for this session of therapy and remember you have to do this three times a week with me while Hound Dog gets you the other two. I said as forced them up and back onto the wooden horses for round two. UA Sports Festival. Third person POV. Everyone in the classes were getting warmed up. While class 1B was getting properly warmed up. Class 1 on the other hand was in the middle of diffusing a rather violent situation. What the fuck gave you the idea to declare against Deku and Teed Icy Hot? Katsuki Bakugo shouted as Kirishima, Siro, and Kaminari were holding him back. The fact that unlike you he actually behaves like a hero, even if he cannot control his quirk yet. Shoto Todoroki said deadpan as usual. Who the fuck gave you the right to decide how a hero is supposed to behave? Bakugo once again screamed his lungs out at his classmate. I assure you I have seen the worst possible example of a hero on a regular basis. Shoto said as Izuku began fanboying. Your father must have introduced to lots of pro heroes, so of course it thanks to him you know a bad example when you see one. Izuku said not realizing what he said both offended Katsuki Bakugo and made Shoto Todoroki slightly repulsed at the thought of him respecting his father. You're correct it is all thanks to my father I know about that as well as I do. Shoto said feeling both frustrated at Izuku fanboying over his father like that but also feeling bad for him being so blinded to the truth of the horrible man. You saying I am a bad example of a hero you useless Deku. Katsuki shouted again making the girls now get in between the explosive classmate and two teens. After Izuku and Ida barely managed to calm the girls down and Bakugo also calming down of his own accord. Though Izuku, the girls, nor the others guys would ever know, it was because Bakugo was afraid of making women angry thanks to his mother. Once this nonsense was done the students were shortly called to enter the stadium where both saw and felt it. The crowds were roaring in excitement, the air itself trembled anticipation of the events to come in a few minutes. Ladies and gentlemen, we now start off the UF first year sports festival. President Mike announced letting the crowd cheer him on. For the first of our many competitors, we have the class that fought against real villains and nearly came out without a scratch. He said stretching out their class number and letter for effect. With this they walked out to show the world their faces taking in the faces of the crowd in return. Most of the class was waving to them putting on a show for the crowd with one deciding to be a little too stiff. So Mina with her BFF tour grabbed a hand each of Izuku and lifted them in the air making him wave to the crowd. Many of the crowd members started yelling things that Kaioka, Mina, Shoji, and Sue could hear with their enhanced hearing. 
Izuku for reasons he could not figure out but assume was one for all doing, could hear them as well causing him to go red at the comments. Those three girls are so cute holding hands together. The green-haired girl shyness is so adorable. I hope that diamond-shaped freckled girl is the one who gives the speech. Looks like we might to get see some girl-on-girl -girl action today. This comment was met with a slap to the head from the person beside them. Gyro and Mina were blushing for a moment before calming down remembering what they are here for. The others who heard these comments gave a quick glance to a blushing Izuku wondering if he could also hear the comments. As far as they knew he only had a strength enhancement quirk with overwhelming power, however it damages his body when he uses it. They decided to ask him after the festival what his quirk did exactly or the crazier one, if he had multiple quirks. Coming next are the other classes 1B all the way through 1H. Present Mike said making one of many more enemies than they already had. The students of 1A were not too happy with the teacher right now for making the other classes mad at them. Now for the athletic oath. Midnight declared while she was cracking her whip with a smirk. The crowd was wondering who the student would be that has been decided to deliver the oath as it was always the top scorer from the entrance exam for the first years. As you all know usually whoever comes in first in the entrance exam gets to give the speech. She said making the crowd frustrated that they are delaying the reveal just to remind them of something that was common knowledge. However that person due to using a lethal attack in training, trying to kill their classmate had lost their right and it is going to the second place score. Midnight said enjoying the crowd shocked faces. Many were either thinking why the child did not have a worse punishment or since Nezu was the principal, what it was they were not telling the audience. So instead of Katsuki Bekugo we will have I-Z-U-K-U-M-I-D-O-R-I-Y-A. She said making sure the crowd knew the name of the person who almost killed her new toy. Izuku Midoriya could not feel his legs but tried to move forward anyway. Fortunately for him Mina and Toru gave him a light push forward. Calm down Izuku, you train with Recovery Girl for this exact kind of moment. Actually was it really for this specific moment? He thought as he reached the steps of the podium. Remember what mom always said you're my little bunny Izuku and everyone will love you one day too a bunny was not the toughest animal by far but at least it could win a crowd over. Izuku thought before he made wise way to the microphone. With a quick clearing of his throat he began. It is an honor to be here before both all you citizens and fellow heroes to say that I am excited is an understatement. I know, we all know that you came here to see us do our best, and we intend to do just that. Whether it is hero, support, business, or general studies we will show you that you can have faith in our abilities to save you. I take pride in every last one of my fellow competitors here as I consider them all to be my rivals. With that as my last piece of important info that I felt everyone both needed and deserved to hear I wish you all not just watching, but also competing a very happy day. He said bowing not getting up as he realized he said hoppy instead of happy. Oh god why did I have to think about the rabbit thing? Izuku thought to himself as he crouched down covering his currently red face. Meanwhile recovery girl and all might were proud of his speech despite the hair out of place at the end of it. Present Mike could not help but laugh at this as he could now picture the green haired boy with bunny ears nibbling on a carrot. Mirko somewhere in the stands was thinking if had a rabbit quirk like her or just like the animal. All right students the first even will be the obstacle course race so get to the starting line outside the tunnel. Midnight said after she got Izuku to recover and explain the rules. All right on your marks, get set, and goo woo woo. Present Mike said as the race started off in a rather unexpected manner. UA Sports Festival, third person POV. All right on your marks, get set, and goo woo woo. Present Mike said as the race started off in a rather unexpected manner. Shoto Todoroki froze the floor to keep everyone in place and blocked the exit with a thick sheet of ice. But as impressive as this was it was what happened next that caught the audience and the sound hero off guard. Pony Tsunotori used her horns to puncture four separate spots in the wall of ice, but are close enough that if a hole was made then it would be just big enough to allow her and Izuku Midoriya to break through. Though no one could see it, Ryaiko used her quirk on the horns to give them the push they needed to break through. It was just a few moments after Todoroki froze the exit that this occurred shocking those who witnessed it. Breaking through the freshly frozen door on a one-pony sleigh is Izuku Midoriya and Ryaiko Yanagi. He shouted as the crowd went nuts cheering for them. Are you sure this is a good idea? Izuku shouted as he held onto the shoulders of her gym uniform for dear life. As soon as Todoroki had frozen the door on them Pony and Ryaiko had nodded to one another as Pony got on all fours preparing her quirk. Izuku had tried to ask her why she was getting on all fours before he was shoved from behind falling forward into a sitting position on her. After that Ryaiko got on her as well and hugged him from behind before the two broke them out to get to where they currently were. Trust my stamina to get us past the first obstacle. Pony shouted back while still looking forward. As much as Izuku wanted to protest this outright stepping off now would risk all three of them falling behind. So for now he decided to wait till they got a good distance from everyone else to try and get off of her if she refused again later to let him off. With her horns freed she returned them to her, jumping up while she was still running on all fours with her classmate and Izuku on her back. Ryaiko used her quirk to boost the horn carrying weight as they flew past Todoroki seeing his disbelief as they dodged his ground freezing attack. An explosion rocked the entrance, blowing away the last of the ice and many others following the example of the first three. Todoroki tried to run forward and catch up with his ice sliding after the three to regain the lead he momentarily made. 
However, many people either passed or caught up to him by following the example of Izuku and the two with him. Bakugo flew past him with explosions, while Setsuna and Suyu floated past him. Suyu used her immense leg strength to kick them further as Setsuna had to lower them to the ground every now and again due to not being used to carrying someone. Iron Jiki showed it after being forced by Itsuka Kendo to use his quirk on Tetsu 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 who was holding onto her waist was sent flying with them. With his iron body he could easily tank the damage from his attacks while she used her enlarged hand to constantly push them off the ground using the momentum. This turned them into a human pogo stick jumping over all of Todoroki ice attacks with ease. Shizaki Ibarra and Mina Ishido both forced their way past the ice floor with their quirks with one using vines to smash footholds in the ice going forward while the other slid on her acid. Kosai Tsuburaba used his quirk to make an air disc to slide on over the ice with his classmate Nito Monoma alongside him on it. Momo Yayurazu used her quirk to make a small electric toy car. Yui Koda used her quirk to make it large like a normal jeep it was modeled after. Finally, as the third passenger Kanoko Komori released her spore out the back window to slow down all those behind them. This was working especially well on Todoroki as the use of his ice was making him need to take constant short breaths due to him not balancing out his own temperature with his fireside. Kayoka Jiro used her quirk to release small, almost unnoticeable shock waves from her earphone jack tips. This combined with Ochako quirk sent the two flying just over the ice boy making him even more frustrated. This makes 18 people who have already passed me. Damn it I will not use the old man's fire. Shoto Todoroki thought as he blamed his father fire half for not making him less resilient to his mother ice half. If the young Todoroki used his fire half as well he would be fine, but because his quirk is divided into fire and ice. His body resilience to both were much less than that of a pure elemental user of either element. His deceased brother Taoya had a similar issue but much worse, while his fire surpassed both Shoto and their father. Taoya Todoroki inherited his mother constitution for ice making him extremely weak to his own quirk. As such even as a so-called perfect combination of their quirks like Shoto was, he was still limited to a degree where he using only half his quirk can overwhelm him. Once they got a good distance from Todoroki they returned the horns to Pony Head and Ryaiko turned off her quirk. As she was running on all fours now she saw a small army of robots up ahead, with zero pointers looming over as their leaders. And now we have reached the first obstacle people, mechanical madness, the gauntlet or robots from the entrance exam. Present Mike shouted as the camera zoomed in on said army. How do you think they will handle this eraser head? He asked his colleague for his opinion on the situation. Aizawa let out a huff before speaking like he always, both complimenting and tearing apart his students' decisions. It is safe to say all 19 that past Todoroki will be capable of either forcing their way through or slipping past them. Aizawa said taking a moment to catch his breath as he was still recovering from his Namu injuries. That being said Midoriya is still too spineless to stand up for himself outside of a life or death battle, he better learn how before this first event ends. Aizawa thought to himself as he saw Izuku getting whisked by those two girls. Granted he could not deny that switching out between those two and his strength quirk could be a viable strategy for conserving their stamina for the next round. Todoroki on the other hand will have difficulty passing them and regaining the lead. He said waiting for his confused friend to respond. What are you talking about? With a powerful quirk like his he should be able to regain the lead with a little more effort no. Present Mike asked confused as to why he lacked faith in his most powerful student. First off he underestimated his opponents at the beginning allowing them to get a significant lead on him. Aizawa said pointing out the common weakness of his student and the student father. Secondly thanks to only using his ice he is running short of breath, had the mushroom spores he inhaled before and he will be lucky to make it in the top 20 students. He said unsurprised as to how motivated everyone is just by being near his problem child. As much as I find it annoyingly similar to All Might, that boy has the natural charisma that makes people who see him to want to work harder. Aizawa thought to himself as he recalled Todoroki declaring the boy his rival before the tournament began. Pony jumped from one head of a robot to the next crushing their heads with Ryaiko once again giving her a boost. This group made it past the robots easily escaping the large zero pointers with their speed and nimbleness. A team of the two green haired girls made their same way past them but destroying many less robots in the process than the group of three. Bakugo deciding simply flying over them was not enough destroyed a zero pointer along his way creating a large roadblock for others. Momo with her group ran them all down as the car was made with reinforced metal, barely taking a dent. Hitsuka with her compatriots followed also destroying more robots leaving piles of scrap. The other barely managing to clear the scrap giving Todoroki the chance to catch up again. This time however freezing over all the scrap to make a frozen spiky barricade. On top of freezing the zero pointers just enough that the moment others try to force their way through they will fall on them. They cleared like it was nothing and Todoroki just may have given himself enough time to get spot number 20 if they all maintain the same positions. Present Mike said impressed with the boy's attack. At this rate Midnight will get what she wants. For Midoriya's sake let hope he does not win this one. Aizawa said after he turned their microphones off before turning to his friend. He really did regret leaving him at her mercy if he came in first, and up till now he thought that was impossible. Granted he expected him to make top 10, but not number 1. He was hoping right now that he really didn't underestimate his student. 
even Nezu thought her suggestion was crazy. Yet the majority of us still agreed to it thinking Nezu knew what he was doing. President Mike said to his friend as they were the only two alongside Recovery Girl and Hound Dog were the only ones to vote against it. All might abstain from the vote to not influence the other teachers as he told them. In her nurse's office for the event Recovery Girl was watching it worried as Izuku was being carried by that American student. Then there was the fear of him coming in first, as much as she did want him to do his best. Coming in first here would mean potentially something worse for him. As much as she wanted to get back at Nezu and the others who voted yes. She had to respect the democratic process and put up at least a semi-proper example for him to follow. Then things got crazy and she began to legitimately worry for his safety as he was now surrounded by crazy people. And Ko Midoriya was watching and somewhat relieved at how her son had people doing all the dangerous work for him. Granted she would have preferred it to be boys as was the fact he was literally riding on top of a girl right now. But again this was better than the alternative of him struggling to keep up with everyone and falling behind until it happened. Things suddenly got crazier and made her wish he was struggling fighting robots right now getting the crap beaten out of him. Watching this unfold before him from the mini-TV in the hallway was an old man in a yellow cape and jumpsuit looking sternly. With a huff he went to the nurse's office to check on an old companion of his who along with Nezu asked him to come out of his retirement as a teacher and help them. With the League of Villains appearance and hints of all for one returning it was decided they needed to get the kids into shape fast, even if it meant using his methods that are now disapproved of by the board of directors. Yet they still agreed that despite his rough training methods as the situation called for him who they considered a desperate measure. It was insulting to the man, but it could not be helped. In order to finish this madness he now had to guide the new user like with the previous user. Back at the obstacle course things had just taken a turn into absurdity as present Mike could no longer hold himself back from screaming. Well his version of screaming. The girls have all lost their minds and the only thing missing is one of them shouting witness me. He said before getting punched by his friend beside him. If Power Loader did not make me these special earmuffs you would have made me deaf just now. Aizawa said rubbing his temples hoping his eyes would be recovered soon enough. Pony was running and she had begun to sweat buckets as the robots took more out her than she had originally planned. Her panting was making Izuku worried she was exhausting herself so he spoke up. Pull over now or I will stop you by force. He said sternly trying to imitate Recovery Girl when she scolded him. Pony deciding it was best not to go against the cinnamon roll when he raised his voice at her she slowed to a stop. Get on my back, he said as he knelt down for her to get on. He wanted to repay her for helping him through that ice and Ryaiko gave her an approving nod. Okay, Pony responded not wanting to push Izuku away by rejecting his offer. They were running a bit further when their run came to a rather explosive end resulting in darkness for Izuku as he passed out. While he tumbled before he passed out he used a flinger to generate air pressure to slow himself down. Granted the flick broke his finger but it was better than falling into the gorge ahead of him. A missile had blasted the ground in front of them causing Izuku to stumble forward sending Pony into the air farther than him. Ryaiko was beside him but was more skin and bones than him so she was more easily sent flying forward. Ryaiko was confused but only for a brief moment after they tumbled to the very edge of the gorge. The confusion only lasted for the brief moment it did due to Izuku being separated from them. However what really caught her attention was the speeding car with the rocket launcher retreating into it. Pony get up. Ryaiko exclaimed as she tried to pull her horse quirked lover out of the way of the car. Unfortunately for them whoever managed to sneak in a car had no problems knocking them into the dark pit behind them. Or even if the school built it with avoiding death in mind, it would probably still hurt like hell to fall in it, especially with a car shoving you in. At best by herself she could slow their fall to avoid major injuries but that is it, she would need Pony to prevent them from falling out of the race. A minute before this Momo, Yui, and Kanoko had caught up to Pony, Ryaiko, and Izuku catching them in their sights. Due to this it would be much easier for Yui to use the rocket launcher Momo made her to blast them away from Izuku. They are in sight, and the rocket is about to be fired. Yui said as she pressed the trigger on her weapon. She aimed it carefully to avoid directly hitting Izuku as he was carrying the wagon lugging beast on his back. Her aim was accurate so it was not a direct hit, it blew up just in front of the target causing Izuku to buckle to a stop by using his quirk. This resulted in the two girls flying forward toward the gorge while Izuku with a broken fin finger stumbled to a stop a bit away from them but not in a direct line with them. All Might watching this unfold nearly coughed up a fountain of BLD at the sight of his successor being dragged along. The audience was fortunately enjoying the sight of two students riding the third to the first obstacle. If not for present Mike Christmas joke he would surely look much worse for relying on someone else to get him to the finish. When young Midoriya stood up for himself again like he did with young Bakugo during the first combat training they did. All Might was very happy to say the least when he saw Izuku carrying his own weight on his makeshift team. The symbol of peace was going to be shocked next however when young Yeyurazu tried to blow him up. The crowd around him had mixed responses, especially when she said her reasoning for what she did to those three. 
A third of the crowd was upset that she used such a dangerous attack on a fellow student like she did. Another third was excited to see that things were getting more intense. It would seem they would definitely be looking forward to young Bakugo fight in the third round if he makes it that far. The final third were in between the two as they were concerned for her tactics, but were impressed by her quirk and her exceptional use of it. The girl was looking like a one-women armory at this rate, especially when combined with that Kodai girl. Back at the racetrack the girls were getting out of their car after knocking over Ryaiko and Pony out of sight. Kinoko get him off the ground we are about to switch to vehicle 2. Yui tied the wire around the grenade pins and the door handle. Momo told her other teammate as she gave out orders. Though she did not expect most she figured at least one idiot would be dumb enough to open the truck door. This idiot later on was Kaminari, but fortunately for him the explosion despite almost knocking him out sent him flying over the gorge. She noticed the other two girls giving her looks as they got out of the car despite following her orders. Oh don't look at me like that, Principal Nezu would never allow for a fatal fall, a painful fall but not a fatal one. She said as she used her quirk to create a three-seater biplane, with a battery similar to the car she made earlier for Yui to enlarge. With Izuku loaded in the same seat as Yui, as they were gonna have Kanoko spread spores as they flew, they took off. Momo being the only one who knew how to fly it was the designated pilot among the three girls as they flew over the gorge. The ropes were getting covered in mushroom spores becoming almost unusable for most of the contestants who got there. Suyu and Setsuna easily jumped from pillar to pillar avoiding the ropes, with Itsuka team doing the same. Mina used her lower acidity acid possible to slide over the ropes as she went from pillar to pillar. Achako with her partner Kayoka pushed over the ropes after a few minutes for Achako to get her breath, repress the urge to puke. The two boys from class 1B continued to use their air discs to slide from rope to rope, until Mina acid broke them. Fortunately for the two Nito also had a bar Shuzaki vine quirk stored up as well saving them from elimination. Speaking of vines, the original quirk user of that vine quirk swung from pillar to pillar with ease catching up quickly. That Hugo explosions not only propelled him above the pillars but also caused the spores to go everywhere. This resulted in Shoto Todoroki having to stop again before freezing a small bridge from pillar to pillar making sure that the ice would last just long enough for him to get past the pillars making them break when the next person would then try to use them, falling through. However the ice user plan was stopped when coming out from the bottom of the gorge was Pony and Ryaiko. This resulted in his bridge breaking on him causing him to fall, with him using his ice quirk to cling to the side of the pillar. The pair of horse girl and ghost girl flew up getting back into the race, along with a good few others passing him as he had to slowly climb back up. Momo was flying the plane with the third obstacle the minefield coming into view when suddenly everything turned. Think, look at my baby FLLLLIE. They had some screamed as she grabbed Izuku from Yui. UA Sports Festival. Third person POV. And just as Momo with her team approaches the minefield with their green haired princess, May Hatsum swoops in and takes her highness from them. Present Mike shouted in astonishment. The pink haired inventor power loader told him about really was filled with as much energy as him. Except instead of learning English like he did to understand his favorite band's music, she mastered engineering to bring every one of her crazy ideas she had to life. Indeed, though I hope for Midoriya's sake, he wakes up before someone else snatches him up even more violently than Yeyurazu did. Aizawa said making many audience members shake their heads. Those who did, did not underestimate Midoriya but rather pitied his luck for attracting such uncouth people. The Midoriya aspect aside, Aizawa was also impressed at how agile she was moving through the air on her jetpack. On top of that it was so well made that he would think she was a third year student. Then there was his problem child Izuku Midoriya, who once again he minimized the damage to his body. At first he wanted to reprimand his student, but seeing how he insisted on pulling his own weight through the race made him satisfied. Though he will give his student a passing mark for stopping them from falling into the gorge by slowing them down. He was now knocked out and being carried around like a doll by these girls. I swear if he ends up coming in first midnight will end up ruining his chance to show himself off at the sports festival thanks to this first round. He thought hoping Mike calling Izuku a princess did not jinx the student. Momo had just flown the plane to the minefield when suddenly someone swiped Izuku from them on a jetpack. They had pink hair and were screaming something ridiculous as they knocked them out of the sky in the process of snatching him. She barely got the plane to stop spinning out of control and pulled up in time to avoid crashing into the mines. However the bottom just barely scraped a few setting them off and this around them blasting them far upward. When we catch up to her and get Izuku back we will make her eat those mines. Momo yelled in frustration while her two teammates held onto their seats worried the seatbelts might tear at this rate. When the race began Mei Hatsum turned on the bug she placed in the stadium to hear what they were saying about the race. It seemed to her the green-haired kid who gave the speech was drawing a lot of attention to himself while getting a lead. So she decided to catch up to him and use him to get people to look at her babies she worked so hard on. Fortunately for her the ice field was the perfect chance to show off her jetpack to the crowd. She could not bring herself to destroy the robots as those babies were just doing what her teacher told them to do. So despite the fact he did not view them like his children like she did with her inventions, she thinking he did view them as such just flew past them. Her air analyzing system she added to her jetpack picked up toxins in the air automatically activating the face mask. 
It had a filter on it to make it so she could still breathe the air around her making it so she would not be weighed down by oxygen tanks. Then Mei Hatsum had made it to the gorge with the rope seeing how badly damaged most of the ropes were. Fortunately it was a quick fly over it to pass a someone that reminded her of a candy cane and countless others catching up to the plane that was supposedly carrying him. Using her quirk she confirmed he was held in the middle seat by a girl with short black hair, so she turned down her speed in favor of more maneuverability. Look at my baby FLLLLIE. She screamed her lungs out as she grabbed the green-haired cutie she was looking for. Up close it was hard to tell if they were a boy or girl with a flat melons. The tracksuit was covering their neck so she could not tell whether or not they had an Adam's apple due to the design of the clothes. As for their face, it looked rather gentle and not at all chiseled, rather they had adorable squishy cheeks. Yet the way they had their legs spaced out a little even while asleep made her wonder if they were a boy. A moment later they opened their eyes for her to see two emerald puppy dog-like eyes that when looked into, made her want to pat their head and protect them. Izuku was confused for a moment as he remembered last he was attacked by some sort of explosion. Now he was currently in the hands of the pink-haired inventor who whether he knew it or not, would later become someone a threat in a sexual way the likes of which he would never see coming until it became too late. Uh, H -H -H. Why are we flying? Izuku Midoriya could not help but scream as he now hugged her tight not wanting her to drop him. Nehatsum was wondering when she heard this as to whether she should explain her baby first or him getting blown up earlier. Well as for our current mode of travel, I made this jetpack last week for swift air travel. May said getting a bewildered look from him. Was I too spot on with my explanation? Well I may as well move on to the next part she thought before continuing. As for why I am currently carrying you, two girls with black hair and a girl with brown hair blew you up along with the other two girls who were with you before picking you up in their airplane. She said seeing the shocked look on his face from her explanation. Izuku Midoriya was trying to process who among the other students could smuggle in a four-seater airplane without him noticing. However he did not remember a plane but a powerful looking jeep before he passed out earlier. Then it clicked in for him that they had a small jetpack and this other group had a plane, which means they needed go maximum to not let the plane catch up. Hurry up and go to the maximum speed your jetpack can go or they will catch up. Izuku screamed in a panic. No need to freak out. Even if the dial is not turned to maximum speed my baby here can still outspeed them. They had some said cackling like the mad woman she is. We need to go all out if we want to guarantee our passing the first round. Izuku screamed back not realizing still that he was screaming. If I use its full power I risk losing control of our flying. How am I supposed to properly fly us to the finish line if I am unable to properly steer us safely? May asked him wondering why he was so eager to unnecessarily push himself so early on in the sports festival. Izuku was about to respond when her words began to suddenly sink in for him to realize the same held true for his quirk. Why was I constantly using my maximum power when I am unable to properly control it? He thought to himself realizing his mistakes till now. Every time he used more power than needed to resolve the problem before him rather than properly judge the situation like he always did when analyzing a hero fight during his note-taking. Also when she mentioned the dial he realized that All Might is able to adjust his power output so he does not kill villains. That means he should be able to adjust the power output as well to also avoid causing unnecessary damage, deaths as well. Before he could thank her however he noticed a shine from behind them before hearing a small plane come with it. Behind you, he shouted as she turned around in time to avoid a direct ramming from it. However they were grazed, which resulted in them spinning out of control going down to the land mines. After doing some quick calculations of wind pressure and average thermal power expended by land mines in years past of the sports festival, he had decided that he only had to use 5% of his power to blow up the land mine and push them just far enough away from the blast, far enough that they would avoid taking damage from it, while also being close enough to make use of the propulsive force they would get from it to claim first place and second place. Watch me All Might, watch me Aizawa Sensei, and watch me Recovery Girl I will become a hero you three can be proud of teaching. Izuku thought this before unleashing a 5% punch just as Mei turned upward straightening them to just above the landmines. This resulted in the two speeding past the plane by going underneath it over the explosions and making it to the finish line. Aizawa was grinning ear to ear ignoring how Mike fell out of his seat surprised to see him smile. I knew you could do it problem child, you finally figured out how not to be a liability on the battlefield. Aizawa thought this as he saw that Midoriya did not break his arm or go full power needlessly. For once he was looking forward to seeing what a problem child would do in the upcoming event as he felt these games were a waste of time. He would prefer to train them and just have the school find heroes for them to intern with. But the school said the sports festival was too good for publicity to ever cancel it. Despite the fact with the USJ attack he though he would have the perfect excuse to push his proposal through, but sadly they also used it as an excuse to hold the sports festival to supposedly show how they were unyielding in the face of the villain attack and will not be intimidated, building moral for the students. Folks this a new one, I-Z-U-K-U-M-I-D-O-R-I-Y-A, has actually made the forever stoic eraser head smile ear to ear. Present Mike screamed shocking all this in the audience who understood the significance of this situation. 
It was common knowledge in the world of heroes that Eraserhead was even less camera-friendly than Endeavor, and most assumed the same for his personal life. But for those who truly knew him, knew he was a nice guy who just showed it in odd ways. But the indisputable fact is, he has never shown more than a grin till this year. Just like last time when he smiled a somewhat proper smile for the first time in years, and it was the same student that did so. Though present Mike would not say it out loud, at least not here for the whole world to see. He would find the student after and thank him for pulling his friend out his shell, starting to return him back to his old self before the Aburo incident. Midnight hearing this was feeling a bit guilty now that she heard what the student had done for her friend. Perhaps I should take it easy on him and just have him wear his gym uniform for the second event if he makes it in first. She thought this not knowing of the plot two perverts have already constructed, or the punishment Nezu would inflict upon her afterwards for breaking the boy's male pride by leaving a pathway for the two perverts to walk on towards him. Momo, Yui, and Kanoko were furious for almost being blown up and saw Izuku awake, clinging to the pink-haired girl that stolen him. Unfortunately for them the minefield below was far too dangerous for them to go lower, so it seemed they would have to settle for taking first place without him right behind them. Momo's original plan was for all four of them to come in first so they could take advantage of the next round. Usually the second round people were given points based on how they placed in the race. Using the fact they would have the four biggest points before becoming a team and merging said points, she would convince him to team up with them. I say we let Pinky pass us and get him first place. Yui Kodai said making the other two bewildered. But then we won't be able to convince him to join us by using the fact us four have the top points. Shroom Kanoko said nervous adding Shroom to the end of her sentences like usual. Like how Tsuyu Asui always adds Kiro to the end of her sentences. Yui then told them what would happen next round and both were highly surprised by this. On one hand they would eventually have to fight Izuku, on the other hand this would give them an excuse to feel him up without looking like perverts. Kinoko was too conflicted to decide so decided to follow Momo's decision on the matter. Momo herself considered the pros and cons, before remembering how fine a figure he cut in the girl's uniform. All right let's allow her to carry him to victor she was cut off as a horn, no two horns pierced the plane destroying the engine. Now it's your turn to get blown you crazy bitch. Ponitsunotori screamed in English as she was too angry to focus on using Japanese. In fact all she could see right now was red, and not just the plane they were flying, she was out for equal BLD after the missile from before. To Momo, Yui, and Kanoko she was no longer a horse, but an enraged bull from hell thanks to all the scratches, bruises, as well as a few gashes. Like Momo said earlier, it was not fatal but it was most definitely painful for the two girls when they landed. Riaiko was still silent, but was cursing them with every thought wanting to see them get a taste of their own medicine. That the trio did as they nosedived into the minefield. But fortunately they landed in a spot Izuku and Pinky blew up already. However when the plane tilted back it landed on a mine blasting them forward as they all screamed their lungs out. Present Mike who was watching this from the announcer's booth was laughing his ass off at this karmic justice. I heard people say your actions come to bite you on the ass, but I never thought they would blow your ass up. He said falling out of his seat laughing at them getting a taste of her own medicine. Aizawa simply grunted managing to keep his laughter in at the sight unlike his loud friend. Though he was gonna have a talk with her and punish her after the sports festival he decided against the punishment. Considering she got paid back for it by the American exchange student he decided he would let her off with a lecture about going too far. That being said, what he did not plan on doing was saving her from whatever punishment Nezu cooked up for her and the other two. As Izuku and Mei were blasting forward their momentum gave out and as a result they got too close to the ground causing them to trip, stumbling forward with Izuku crossing first with Mei coming in second behind him claiming her spot in the next round. And the winner of the first event is year one representative Izuku Midoriya. Mike shouted as the audience cheered with a good few women in the crowd going a bit red. Mei when landed fell crotch first on Izuku face with her legs falling into place under his arms hooking around them. The girl was confused unable to see him and with his voice muffled currently Aizawa spoke up. Mei Hatsum I must ask you remove your crotch from my students face before you suffocate them. Aizawa said just wanting Izuku to get through this upcoming hell as soon as possible. Mei noticing him under her thanks to Aizawa telling her she grinned and got off of him helping him up while shaking his hand. Hey there princess my name is Mei Hatsum, future CEO of Hatsum Industries and one day greatest support gear inventor of our time. She said shaking him so hard his brain felt like it was rattling inside his skull. My name is Aunt Princess it's Izuku did not get to finish his retort as a plane rammed into him with him getting flipped forward into the front seat. Fortunately or unfortunately depending on how she will see it in the upcoming future. Momo was out cold when she passed the finish line along with her two teammates with Kanoko looking like she wanted to barf. UA Sports Festival. Third person POV. Izuku Midoriya woke up in what looked like the school's infirmary with six others laying down in beds just like he was. Among them were Pony and Riaiko who were covered in bandages but otherwise seemed they were just waking up from their short nap. Kanoko was rinsing her mouth out using mint-flavored mouthwash to try and get the smell of barf out of her mouth. Yui and Momo were taking some pills for their splitting headaches while Recovery Girl was chewing them out for using the rocket launcher. Todoroki was using an air-filtering machine to cleanse his lungs of the spores while laying down to rest up after Recovery Girl healed him. 
What made you think blowing those three up was a good idea? Recovery girl shouted wanting to leave her with a cracked skull right now. Unfortunately for the old women her Hippocratic oath prevented her from harming her patient. As tempting as the girl was making it right now. It is not like their lives were in any actual danger. Besides, I took responsibility for Izuku who was still in the race. Momo said grumbling under her breath about how it was unfair she was getting yelled at for indirectly attacking them when the horse girl tried to purposely made them crash on a minefield. Practically kidnapping him mid-race after blowing him up as not being responsible. Recovery girl yelled again before she received a text message. It was Nezu saying the commercials were up and he needed the students to come for the second event explanation. As much as she wanted to take her time tearing into them for blowing up fellow students like they did she woke up those who were still asleep and sent them on their way. Except Izuku who on his way was pulled aside by two students and given a dress and some clothes to wear for the second event saying it was an order for their teacher midnight. To say the crowd was ecstatic would be as great as an understatement as saying Endeavor does very little property damage. Now that students second through 43 were out on the field it could begin, well the explanation for the second round. Cracking her whip and wetting her lips with a sultry lick midnight took a breath before starting. Alright all my love slaves out there, before I go explaining the second event let's show you all the results from the obstacle course race. She shouted pointing to the screen behind her as a name, place number, and student ID picture were shown one at a time. Race results. 1. Izuku Midoriya. 2. Mei Hatsum. 3. Momoye Yurazu. 4. Yui Kodai. 5. Kinoko Komori. 6. Ponitsuno Tori. 7. Ryaiko Yanagi. 8. Katsuki Bakugo. 9. Suyu Asui. 10. Setsuna Takage. 11. Itsuka Kendo. 12. Tetsu 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 Tetsu. 13. Naironjiki Shota. 14. Kosai Tsuburaba. 15. Nito Manoma. 16. Achako Uraraka. 17. Kayoka Jiro. 18. Ibarra Shizaki. 19. Mina Ishido. 20. Shihai Kirwaro. 21. Tenya Aida. 22. Minoru Maita. 23. Ajiro Kirishima. 24. Nashirawa Jiro. 25. Juzo Honuki. 26. Jirota Shishida. 27. Hiryu Ren. 28. Kijiro Bondo. 29. Hinata Siro. 30. Sin Kaibara. 31. Tagaru Kamakiri. 32. Yosu Wais. 33. Mizo Shoji. 34. Denki Kaminari. 35. Rikido Sato. 36. Hitoshi Shinso. 37. Manga Fukudashi. 38. Yuga Ayama. 39. Koji Koda. 40. Toru Hagakure. 41. Fumikage Takoyami. 42. Shoto Todoroki. 43. Nuno Suapingu. The crowd was not surprised that all of the hero class students made it through the first round but many of the heroes were confused. It has always been tradition for only 42 students to make it through to the second event so the extra one made no sense. On top of that Izuku Midoriya the first place winner from the first even was not among the crowd of students. Though there were also those who recognized Shoto Todoroki as the son of Endeavor and were confused as to how the child of a pro hero could come in second last. Midnight was taking obscene amounts of pleasure in the crowd's confusion and helpless looks they gave her hoping for her to relieve them with information. Alright people now that you have seen all 42 contestants participating allow me to introduce our guest hero assisting with the second event, the dragon hero, Rukyu. Midnight declared as said hero walked up to the podium from one of the stadium two field entrances. Needless to say this surprise addition was enough to momentarily take the audience minds off the missing student till he was soon to be revealed. In assisting her, mainly due to the fact that she refused let us make a giant muzzle with an infinite flamethrower built in for this event, will be a year three student of ours who works under her as a work-study sidekick, Nejair Hado. Midnight said as the female member of the current Big Three walked up to join them on the podium waving to the crowd. Everyone was eating this up seeing a third year assist the hero for the first year student sports festival. As for the infinite flamethrower, the exact mechanics will not be explained due to the original design being made by Mei Hatsum. however she did give us her express permission to use it. She said used to see shocked faces as the 18-plus hero. Noticing the whispering faces of the support gear companies, Nezu let her know through the earpiece to tell them why a weapon of incredible destruction was made in the support course. For those who are concerned as to why such a thing was made by a support course student, it was not intended to be used as support gear. But between three days of no sleep, enough coffee for every employee of UA to have two cups each day of the three days, and accidentally setting a classmate on fire she got a random spark of an idea, deciding to bring it to life. Midnight said subtly pausing for a few seconds to catch her breath as she let it sink in for the support companies. For those who did not know the exact number Nezu would never reveal that information. But when Midnight told them that, the total number included not just teachers but custodians, lunchroom workers and other positions as well. Even the other students gave her a healthy distance of 5 feet out of fear of her other inventions she brought to the sports festival. That being said from teachers, to civilians, to other heroes, to students, and pretty much to almost anyone watching this were trying to wrap their heads around how she had not had a heart attack yet. 
They had some parents upon watching this check to see all the coffee in the house was gone, making them decide to never buy coffee grinds again. From this day onward her family stuck to tea, despite her many attempts in the future to smuggle coffee into her home and the support course studio. On the bright side for the pink-haired inventor a coffee company watching this was already talking about sponsoring her future lab once she graduates. The military however was wondering if they could quote-unquote convince her to sell the design to them or see if they can force her to hand it over to them in some way if the first plan failed. Those however would be events for other days, both of which if this was a story readers would find quite amusing to read about. Now on to the event my darlings. Midnight said as the screen changed behind her to show a cartoon Izuku in a dress hiding behind a cartoon of dragon form Rukiku and Nejair Hado. This event will be called, Rescue the Princess. She exclaimed the last part as the title appeared above the cartoon figures on the screen in bubbly letters. Cementos will make a maze of concrete with Izuku Midoriya along with the dragon and her assistant in the center guarding him. Since he will be assisting in the second event unable to participate he is already guaranteed a spot in the third round. Midnight stopped to look at the astonished faces of the audiences who were caught off guard by this new kind of event. A 30-minute timer will start after the princess is rescued from the dragon. Every five minutes the maze will change shape to keep things interesting. Midnight said making Cementos moan at the thought of all the extra work her event made for him. As for points, every second someone is holding onto him they earn one point. If they use an attack to snatch him away from a fellow competitor that they obviously know will hurt him they will lose anywhere from 3 to 15 points based on our judges for this. Eraserhead, Present Mike, and Principal Nezu will judge this for the second event each one able to take away anywhere from 1 point to 5 each. She said earning nods from those in the crowd who disapproved earlier of Momo use of a rocket launcher, while those who did approve of her excessive use of force booed the point loss rule, making comments like how it was not the other students' faults if Izuku was too fragile to take a few hits. As for the team aspect, students can go at solo or form teams up to a maximum of four people. However the more people on your team the more the points are evenly divided amongst you and your teammates. Midnight said as the agencies who wanted to see the students' teamwork skills were relieved by this tradition still remaining intact. Also anyone who steps one foot outside the maze walls is automatically eliminated. She said making sure it was clear for them all. Midnight then noticed the shadow of a certain green-haired student from one of the entrances to the stadium's playing field. She snickered to herself at how he was so shy despite the fact that pretty much everyone knew he is all my kid and by everyone that meant all the hero course teachers, and most of the first-year hero students. Granted none of them ever approached him about it as they all had assumed it was meant to be an unsaid thing. Despite All Might making it painfully obvious by always pulling the young man into his office for a private talk or how he reacted around him. The other teachers with the exception of a few made a betting ring on how long it would take All Might to outright admit it. Neza being the exception as they lost to him the last three dozen times he took part in a betting pool they did thanks to his intelligence quirk. Recovery girl because present Mike noted how harsh she was with him and Aizawa after Midori came into class cross-dressing. Granted with Mike she would have been even more angry cause of him laughing his ass off at the boy suffering if she had found out. So the rest of the teachers agreed to keep her out of the loop as much as possible with Izuku-related incidents. Aizawa said he did not care and Hound Dog would scold them for using a student's possible emotional trauma to gamble away their paychecks to one another. All Might for obvious reasons was also kept out of Izuku-related incidents for a similar reason to Recovery Girl but less out of fear and more for the fact that he is at the center of the bet so therefore he cannot be allowed to know of it. And our princess for this event, Her Highness Izuku Midoriya. Midnight called out pointing to the entrance so camera would turn to him. As Izuku Midoriya walked out slowly out to the dress he was not accustomed to wearing. His face with a bright red blush over his diamond-shaped freckles, making them stand out even more than usual. The light green dress he was given to wear earlier left the top of his shoulders exposed but still had sleeves going midway down his upper arm half. On top of that it had black puffy trimming around the top of the spots where began covering his arms, also covering underarms in the process fortunately enough. It reached all the way down past his own feet requiring him to lift it up slightly at the waist as he walked in it. On the back was a zipper that he just barely managed to pull up, albeit making him realize he would really feel the pain in his shoulder tomorrow morning. It had a diamond pattern on the bottom half with gemstones added into the middle of each diamond that was sewn in to make the pattern. For shoes he was still wearing his red high tops as he refused to wear anything else other than them. On his head was a diamond tiara, obviously the diamonds were fake plastic but were still looked real enough to not be obvious to anyone who was not a jewelry expert. Midnight seeing this drop the tiara she was gonna have him wear with his gym as her jaw began hanging along with the dragon hero beside her. Nejair Hado was squealing and jumping in place while admiring how pretty he looked and now understood why Midnight betted on him coming in first to play this role. Why, well, ate a minute here folks, what kind of fan service did Midoriya decide we deserved? Not that I am complaining, but damn. Am I the only one that thinks that he makes the most adorable princess? Present Mike shouted as him saying he was caught by the crowd causing most to freeze. It seemed that most of the audience assumed he was a girl while the others could either tell his true gender or he was androgynous enough for them to not care either way. 
What did I do to deserve this nonsense? You know what, never mind on second thought, I know at least a dozen things I did to deserve this in the last month alone. Also, Mike, shut up before I punch you in the face. Aizawa said in his usual bored tone not being able to take much more. Also, Midnight, is this not a bit too much, even by your own standards? He asked her causing Midnight to choke on her own breath coughing. I did not tell him to wear that. I was just gonna make him wear a tiara with his gym uniform. I swear. Midnight screamed pointing at the announcer booth. But they told me that you told me to wear this. Izuku exclaimed as he tripped back forgetting his dress was slightly longer than his own legs. This resulted in it flipping back covering his face with the front of his dress but revealing his own crotch. The pair of panties that came with the dress barely containing his genitals showing a slight bulge. Fortunately for him the year 3 student quickly pulled the front down and helped him up patting his back telling him it was gonna be okay. I gave no such orders. Also who she was cut off from her shouting as two male students began to cry out in outrage banging their heads on the ground. Knew oh they really are dude. Mina Reminda and Denki Kaminari screamed in frustration crying as they both had hoped he was actually a girl. Though Mina would only prefer women Kaminari was actually okay with Izuku being a guy cause of how cute his reactions are when he gets teased. The reason Kaminari was also upset was that he hoped that he could enjoy the taboo fact that a girl was changing in the boys locker room with them this whole time. As stupid as his reason was he was not a homophobic bastard like his partner in crime who was beside him right now also crying with him. Achako when seeing this was turned on like the other girls and a few of the guys, but also shocked. She now had to rethink her entire view of Izuku and her own thoughts after seeing how upset he was by this. After the perverted duo calmed down Izuku began explaining through a few sobs of shame as to how they had approached him earlier. Unfortunately for the two boys recovery girl was already filling out recommendation forms for them to purposely be sent to the worst homophobic therapy sessions she knew of. Such things were deemed necessary for heroes in the past after a hero agency once arrested the participants of a pride parade on obviously fake charges when they turned down their street. Granted this event happened around 80 years ago, but the Hero Public Safety Commission did not want a repeat of something like this ever again. Gran Torino who despite his Alzheimer's was shocked enough when seeing Izuku in the dress to come to his senses. This resulted in him speeding through the hallways like a madman trying to make his way to the podium to give the half-naked brat a roundhouse to her head. As for the quote-unquote worst one recovery girl decided to send them to, it was considered the worst as it was borderline torture rather than actual therapy. But since they actually did get the results the HPSC wanted in the end, they did not bother doing the extra paperwork needed to abolish that specific one. That and some of the members on the HPSC higher-ups enjoyed watching the videotape pain those people went through. Since they were being problematic for hero society to the point where they had difficulty covering it up, none felt the least bit guilty about watching such excruciating torment unfold. Back at the hallway earlier, Izuku was about to follow the others walking out of the infirmary when suddenly he was pulled around the other corner. The ones who pulled him aside was Denki Kaminari and Minor Umaita, the shorter one holding a folded up piece of cloth with a tiara on top. This made Izuku Midoriya cautious of what they were about to say as they led him to the change room for the guys. We are gonna be straight with you since we do not want to make midnight any more mad than you probably do. Mina said as the boys agreed earlier to let him do all the important talking. Izuku shook a little imagining what the 18-plus hero would do to him if he talked back to her, thinking of worse things than what Kakan has done to him in the past. She told us to give you these clothes to change into, then for you to join her on the podium. He said grinning as Izuku took the clothes and turned away to the changing room. You want us to help you change Midoriya. Denki Kaminari suggested getting nod of approval from Minta. The electric quirk user grabbed the one for all user shoulder right where the scar of Bakugo hand was causing them to turn around and punch him with a 5% punch to the gut. This slammed Kaminari into wall knocking the wind out to him, which was preceded with another attack. Izuku kicked Minda in the face as he tugged on Izuku pant leg, with Minda hitting the wall hair first. This caused the dwarf to bounce back as Izuku closed the door in a panic causing them to bounce back and forth a few times before stopping. Back to the present. Once Izuku was back together midnight now upset literally whipped the asses of the two idiot students who abused her name like that. Calm down midnight, if you showed a little more self-control on a regular basis then maybe they would not have been able to get away with that lie like they did. Aizawa reminded her calming her down slightly. Granted she was still fuming bit due to the fact that now for all she knows recovery girl, or Nezu, or possibly both will punish her after the sports festival. Alright little listeners, for anyone who wants to participate on a team go to Vlad King and the group of Thrid years by the table over there to register your teams for the second round. Present Mike shouted as everyone who wanted to partner up ran over there. Once everyone was done, Rukyu and Nejair Hato took Izuku to the spot indicated by Cementos as the maze center. With the maze walls raised by the outer layer first so the inside would go unseen the maze was ready to enter. Each team of students or individuals took their spots at the designated openings as present Mike got ready to signal it. 3, 2, 1, go, he said with a blowhorn going off singling for everyone to enter the maze and start. Thank you for joining us on this incredible journey through What If Deku Cross Dressed. 
I hope you found it as intriguing and thought-provoking as we did. A big shout-out to Kuji17 for crafting such a compelling story. Don't forget to check out their profile on fanfiction.net for more amazing works, the link is in the description below. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and don't forget to subscribe to Quirky What If for more fascinating explorations into the world of fanfiction and fantasy. Your support helps us create more content like this, and we're always excited to hear your thoughts and suggestions in the comments section. See you guys in the next video.